we'll get Greg. Oh, he's waving because there's a delay. <laughs> that was hilarious. He started waving. Greg Proops is next. Obi and Anthony show. Act six. That's a crock of murder. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Proops is looking at us like, what? In studio, Greg Proops playing Caroline's all this weekend in New York City. Uh, tonight, uh, uh, just a ton of shows. Call 212-757-4100 for reservations, all right? All right, I will. <laughs> Good morning, y'all. Hi, Greg. Hey. How are you guys doing? We were Good. talking about the old TV shows. Yeah. And everything we're was like a recipe for murder. A Quinn Martin production. <laughs> yeah, right. Recipe for murder. Prologue. Prologue. And then epilogue at the end. And you're Epilo like, what's epilogue. an epilogue? <laughs> right. Why are we using the Greek unities? <laughs> it's a TV show about an old man with a horse as a partner. <laughs> yeah. Tonight's episode, soup can full of death. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what we were talking like, about. <laughs> somberly intoned. Yeah. Streets of San Francisco always had this. Yeah, yeah. Too, you know. That was one of my favorites. And then the epilogue was the wrap-up where they kind of... Had the little laugh at the end. Yeah. Everything was fine. Well, they the, caught whoever they had to catch. Right, well, the prostitute right. is now making something of herself. Right. right, right. right. Now exactly. she's a housewife. Or... These cookies are from Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Douglas got his test back after doing undercover at the bathhouse, and he was negative. <laughs> you know, epilogue. <laughs> T-cell count still high. Yeah. <laughs> It's All right, great to be here. I know. I was just thinking of something. We had Larry the Cable Guy in yesterday. Terrific. And, and now we're doing a national uh, radio show now. They loved Larry the Cable Guy. And now uh, everyone thinks we're in tune with each other, the truckers and the southerners. And I'm like, just wait till you hear Greg Proops tomorrow. Oh. The, the polar opposite of Larry the Cable Guy. Well, I well, think they're a little different politically. Uh, which is fine. I don't, you know. Politically, yeah. But I think comedically, golly, we're all there to make people happy. And is there any greater gift than laughter? <laughs> Other than the striking of a small child for misbehaving, I don't think there's any greater gift than that. Larry and I are not working the same patch of ground, so there's <laughs> very all. little likelihood that we're in competition with one another, and I wish him all the best. I understand he's extraordinarily good at uh, at his gig, and he, he he's a tremendous marketer. I only wish I had that kind of business acumen. I, I couldn't sell anything. Yeah, no? Yeah, no, I couldn't sell ice to people on fire. <laughs> so it's a, You don't have any products you sell? Nothing? No, I'm going to have a CD later, but by the time I put it out, the material on it, like, hey, that Billy Carter, what a jerk, you know? <laughs> Gosh, this Falklands War, when will that be over? So I got, I really got to jump on stuff Well, that's a what sucks sooner. if you do topical humor. You can't really, you know, get no. the CDs out there. No, you got to be immediate with that jazz. But uh, so, you know... Uh, I, I will though. Like I'm, I'm gonna. I'm threatening to have a CD on my website. I know people like to buy stuff, and uh, that's an important part of business. Yeah, you should. But just, I'm just yeah. learning that. <laughs> most just comics learning really, that basic tenet. Most comics are really lazy though. Like he seemed to be a go-getter. Oh, Larry totally. Guy. Like he's pushing. He's always uh, making calls to radio stations. Really pushing. I do believe he's products. a whore. Is what he is. There you go. <laughs> but but uh, the comics usually pretty lazy. The lifestyle they lead. Stay up late. Sleep late, try to anyway, Jimmy. What Works is, for me. Yeah. What did Seinfeld say? He said when he was doing the show that they would have comedians come in. So that was yeah. the difference between actors and comedians. When actors showed up for the audition, it was like the thing they'd be waiting for all week, and comedians always just act like you're fucking ruining their day by getting <laughs> up all <laughs> <laughs> That's so true, man. My buddy always says, you, uh, uh, like, I've been on, I'm sure you have too, you do part on a sitcom or whatever, but like people go, so you're an actor, Greg, and I'm like, no, not really, because that would require me focusing for 30 whole minutes on something as opposed to thinking about what I want to say next and how I can be a smart ass. Like, and the, the idea of like, hi, I am from France and I'm wearing a mustache and <laughs> quick, get the bullets. No, it's not going to. Yep. I don't think I could really handle that. No. You uh, like, if it was like close it. to my character, I could do it. Do you like acting or no? I do because, uh, it, but it, you know what? Because it's scary. It's scary. I mean, in, in sitcoms, I'm usually the snipey guy, surprisingly. Right, sure. Or some sort of snide gay guy that comes in. <laughs> These are the parts I've played over and over, simply because I sound and look this way. That's 90% of acting, though. People think acting is like this difficult mountain journey or something, and actors make you think, we had to go to Fiji for two weeks and learn how to do kung fu? Hey, blow me. <laughs> you, ever, you ever have your boss drill up your butt like an armadillo for weeks at a time? That's acting you know to pretend like you need to be where you need to be yeah anyone in the world would want to be an actor they rub your legs they give you donuts 
That thing's cake, <laughs> total cake. And anyone who makes it in that profession has to admit how lucky they are because it, it is ridiculously easy. Anyone can act if you just stick them in front of them. I mean, not anyone. We've proved that. But yeah. You know what I mean? Like, when, I, I just can't believe it when actors go, it was really hard. I had to, I had to gain weight and grow my hair. And hey, <laughs> dude, you ever have your mother come over to your house? <laughs> you ever not be able to get it up for like weeks at a time? Now, that's acting. <laughs> Honey, the vernal equinox, it's the moon or something. You know? yeah. <laughs> Someone's going to call us out on something. We'll let him have his uh, moment here. Rob, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Go ahead. Yeah, I think Greg is like a really funny guy. I like who signed us anyway, but you guys bash like improv comedy all the time. I'm surprised you have him on the show today. <laughs> no, we bash not improv comedy, dude. Bad improv comedy. 99% of improv comedy stinks. It's the same so old you've seen my show. <laughs> no, if improv comedy is done well, it's unbelievable. It's like anything else, but you just see more bad improv comedy than you do I'm not good gonna, improv I'm comedy. I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I wasn't a fan of Whose Line Is It Anyway, but I saw you at the Montreal Comedy Festival. I laughed my ass off. I mean, his stand-up is unbelievable. It, it was it, the, the improv stuff is just not my cup of tea, that's all. You're a chicken who works in a deli. Go. What? No, oh, I love that I one. Uh, <laughs> he loves I doing hate that the one, though. The to be honest, freezes. it's been my weekend job for 14 years. <laughs> Really? I've done improv since college, yeah, but mostly I consider myself a stand-up. I've been extremely fortunate to fall into that, and it just carried on way past the sell-by date that I ever thought I'd be. Yeah. And now, you know, hey, right on. It's been a whole career, so. Mm -hmm. People like it. You know who likes it? Families, and that's why you guys, because of your bitter, dark, cynical, <laughs> horrible, shriveled, spaced-out souls that... <laughs> Like some sort of piece of right, jetsam yeah. flying across the universe that's been exposed to yeah, solar winds and had right. all kind of humanity banged out of it by the radiation of the universe. Yeah, this is not a family show. All right. We hate family. Yeah, I know. We Dude, I'm down with you. I don't humor. have kids either. I, you know, but I uh, just, uh, it surprised me, but it's been, fam families really like it because they can watch it together oh. and you don't have to explain like, Hey, how come this person's not screwing over this person for a million dollars on the island? And mother, what's Filatio? You know, the, <laughs> those questions never come up. Instead, it's why are 40 year old men acting gay all the time with each other? <laughs> Someone described the show once as a bunch of, a bunch of assholes playing charades. And I thought that was the hey, funny. My favorite one was yeah. on an English website about improv. Why not prepare something funny? That was prepared. Yeah. <laughs> you want to hone that improv and, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you know, if given a chance, I would write something to, but but uh, you know, you don't. They don't give you a chance. So. Golly. So you, what what do you not like about kids? You just don't like the kids. I like kids. I just yeah. don't have any kids. But people, there's this mandate in America that somehow you're supposed to breed if capable, and uh, I don't get that. I you know, I'm not happy. I'm married. I, I don't, we don't want kids, and that's the end of it, you know? And people go, but why? It's like, because I don't want to be like you. You know what it is? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the people, they end up, it's like, uh, it's like sleeping next to the bean pod in Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Yeah. They, they, they were like us. They didn't want kids. And then all of a sudden, they have kids, and it's like, it's the most wonderful thing. Here, you want, you need kids, too. Fall asleep next to the bean pod. And wake up, and you'll have kids, and then you'll be spreading this around. Uh, what is it? Johnson and Johnson has a has a commercial out now. It's like uh, after you have kids, uh, everything changes. And they had a guy that used to, I guess, read Playboy or something, and now he's reading his children. Uh, some Rick, can you books. imagine? He has like, to get I up in the middle of the that. night. When yeah. He used to drink at 7 in the morning. Golly. Yeah. It looks like a big inconvenience, and yeah. I cannot be inconvenienced. Exactly. I'm too selfish. I'm sure it's profound and wonderful. I have nothing against children. I couldn't eat a whole one. I'll split one with you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I just I can't stand the pressure. Like, you're not normal if you don't have right. kids. It's like, whatever. So, you know. I'm unto, uh, hey, do what you want to do. Yeah. Isn't it fun <laughs> to be able to just pick up and go somewhere if you want to? Well, I've I found to it to be quite things. fun over the last yeah. 15 years. Yeah. Yeah, you just get up and go. You don't have to call a babysitter or drag some overgrown fetus and equipment with you. They all got the equipment. Somebody can't just, a guy that has a, has a kid, used to be a friend of yours, can't just come over the house anymore. It's not just like drop oh, no. by, have a few beers, watch some TV, and have some laughs. All of a sudden, it's uh, the SUV pulls up with just crates of crap. That now goes all over the floor, and you need to put the baby in it and take the baby out. Now shove this in his mouth. Oh, he's crying. Put this in there. <laughs> Grab this. Joe, it smells like shit. Uh, change the diaper. Get this. And I want no part of it. And they always joke, hey, what? you want to change a diaper, Anthony? No. no. Don't even ask. It's not even funny anymore. Just stop it. 
hate the children. All right, calm like down. Them around the house. It was just a, just Guess a, we opened up a door to your son. You really did. It's just a casual question to Greg. You Golly. really did. She was. Let's relax, bro. Once they get a little older, what do you think and of you divorce? I would be. Oh, yeah, right? no. Oh, no. Yeah. Don't get me started on women. Yeah. With all four limbs, I hate them, right? <laughs> <laughs> we did the divorce thing yesterday. Yeah, on the please. Show. It got right. a little ugly in here yesterday yeah, with I the divorce it talk. Yeah, it usually does. We, we were just discussing how the guys get screwed in the divorce uh, setup. Oh, surely call. not. And how we were saying how <laughs> Scott Peterson's, uh, uh, Lacey Peterson's mother was saying that, you know, uh, divorce is always an option, not murder. And I was saying divorce isn't always an option for a lot of people. It's too expensive. I'm not saying murder shouldn't be an option. But you I'm understand. just saying. Thank goodness you put that caveat in there. Anthony. <laughs> I think a lot of people out there were thinking, well, guy, Anthony said uh, divorce yeah, isn't an option. Yeah, maybe I should go the other way. I got a bag full of broken glass. You know? <laughs> Sometimes the old Scott Peterson fishing trip seems a little more of an option than divorce. Yeah, he had a great plan, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he Christmas he Eve. Don't worry about it. Everybody goes fishing on Christmas Eve. <laughs> of course. What he means? Aliens came. They abducted her. I've got excuses. Great alibi. <laughs> Solid case. He might want to think it out a little more. Well, it. he thought it out a little better than that other jerk-off did oh, Utah? Uh, in Utah. Oh, God. Look, you know, uh, uh, you're right. <laughs> men, men, men do, men do get it. screwed over. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Wait, he wanted to go somewhere. Go ahead. No, no, no? I don't, okay, I don't no. have any hilarious. Uh, all right, it's all, all my wife hilarious. killing humors in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to break it out in go case anyone Caroline's comes down if to you want to hear that. Exactly. Don't, burn, don't burn it all. Right, all no, here. Don't burn it up on well, the opium. Didn't his show. lies actually get him busted? Like, is, like his plan was actually. From a criminal point of view, except for the hair in the boat, I mean, he executed it pretty well, except for the he fact he got caught in the head. But just the way he did it and he covered up with the... Uh... Covered it up? He, he, he took a mattress cover and wrapped her up in it and threw no, no, her no, Scott away. Peterson. Oh, I thought you were talking about the buffoon no, no, in no. Utah. No, he was awful. Scott Peterson. I'm saying his own recorded conversations where things he said got, got him busted. But, I mean, he, the crime itself, he did pretty... You think that was pretty good? Well, I mean, it was just if you're going to do that, that's the way you would do it. Dumping her body uh, right where you went fishing? <laughs> All right, I'm not saying there weren't flaws. <laughs> I need to pick it apart. Just the up criminal like... genius of Jim Norton. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jim, maybe you should, uh, I don't know. Stick to comedy and not uh, murder. Oh, plans. my gosh. I've spilled Dr. Pepper all over the crime scene. Well, I'll just leave. No one will notice. <laughs> I just think that he did a good job with that as far as not getting busted. Until if his yeah. words, if he didn't have recorded conversations or if he didn't tell Amber, like, yeah, my wife's gone two weeks before he killed yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. I'm in Paris and it's so beautiful here. What? what? Exactly. That's what did him in, not the, uh, the, the hubris scene. of the criminal mind. It reminds me of a Columbo. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two hour Columbos that could be wrapped up in 15 minutes, but you gotta watch them. Those also. were good because the criminal was always from some insane high class realm. They were always a, a composer or a conductor or a mystery right. writer. <laughs> it was never a Joe Schlub dude who just wipes someone out with a hammer. Like, Lieutenant, I can't believe you're here. I'm in the middle of finishing my symphony. <laughs> and then they were always wildly arrogant, like toasting themselves over the dead body with a vintage Vouv Clicquot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow, no, nothing could wrap up my master. And then it'd be something as painful as, like, the radio station was tuned to the wrong thing and that keys Columbo into the... Well, he wouldn't listen to country. He was a classic. You know, like, oh, my God. He got him to talk. That's like, what I loved about two Columbo. Clues, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. The people, if they would just lawyer up or just shut their mouths, you know... I can't understand why there were footprints on yeah, the window. Right. And then the guy, well, perhaps, Columbo, he went here for air. And he's, like, describing exactly right, what he did. Right. Just shut your mouth. Hey, look, Columbo, talk to my lawyer. Yeah, it's right. to talk to you. Shut your I'm mouth. I'm extraordinarily busy today, Lieutenant. I have no idea why you're at my country home. And they get him on the... <laughs> they he follows get him the on room. the littlest thing, you know? And that's when I noticed the second hand on your watch was five seconds faster. Right, right. I did kill her, Colombo. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> Knocked my watch against her teeth and it went off by fire. You're a genius. <laughs> you see the one where, he, where the, actually the body was in the wall and Colombo dialed her beeper and he heard it oh, beeping yeah. behind the wall? Beeping behind the wall. <laughs> <laughs> there was a Hawaii 5 that uh, had the best plot jump I've ever. If the, if the kids remember Hawaii 5 I, I assume it's still on in reruns. Ah, the kids. Yeah. But, until the a, end of time. Hawaii 5 was, was fantastic. Set place, uh, took place in paradise and they drove giant black cars and wore black suits like no one else in Hawaii ever. <laughs> Basically, they look like gangsters in the show. Yeah. But so these kids steal like the King Omakawaki shawl 
from the Hawaiian Museum of Recent Antiquity. And they go to the scene of the crime. The shawl's not there. And they go, you know, it's probably art thieves. And McGarrett, I swear to God, this is in the first reel. Five minutes into the show. But what if it was a group of kids? <laughs> Cut two. Cam Fong is pulling up in front of their house like he found the house. So basically, they're just hiding the shawl for the rest of the episode. And I thought, couldn't you have waited until the, like after <laughs> yeah, the, the second commercial for that revelation? The end of the show? Yeah. It'd be like Columbo. No, he did it. Like two seconds in, you know. And then we're just like driving the rest of the show. If I can catch him. <laughs> He's just over the hill. That's so funny. Oh, he just never God. gets the case. He's, he's a homicide. I like those shows. he never gets just those easy cases. There was more cat and mouse. I'm not a big CS. I know everybody in the world loves every CSI I know, show. Yeah. I don't like forensic stuff that much. That loses me. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. Ex and the screaming memes. Yeah, I don't like it at all. <laughs> and the willies. I, like I, got, the, I got a minor case of the willies. The yeah. willies, too? Mm. Yeah, I like, like, like X-Files better. I was more of an yeah. X, because it sort of combined that, but then there was sci-fi things, and it'd be like, oh, a fluke lived in his liver or whatever. <laughs> It's always something <laughs> abstruse. <laughs> CSI, it's always gross. He killed her and he ripped her head off. I'm like, hey, dude, I can read the news. <laughs> I want to be entertained. It doesn't like ER. Some chicks either. in there. Oh, I'm not a big I've ER fan either. I watched it years ago once. It seemed good. I watched I it once, too, trying to you know get into it because everybody was watching it. But it, it's one of the most depressing. Like I can't see sitting there to be entertained and just be depressed. It was some episode Man. where it, they had to tell a kid that his parents were killed and and oh, bring the awesome. kid into the room with the dead body. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy Sleep Clark. tight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes yeah. Jim laugh. <laughs> Jim loves laughing That's over sweet. horrid things. Yeah, I like yeah. depressing things. Actually, I like depressing shows, depressing films. Yeah, they're I was more he likes to get sad. Jim yeah, likes yeah, to get if sad. If it's well done, if it's not tear jerky and, and forced. I was more an NYPD blue, you know, Great show. kind of guy. There was those camps, the cop show or the hospital shows. It's been that way for a year. Remember the medical center? Yeah, the medical center, and then the cop shows were like the rookies, stuff like that. That was more cop, cop rock. Cop, cop rock. rock. What a great idea! It's a cop show where they sing and dance. Go. That was terrific. Terrific. Would that last awesome. one whole season? Yeah. Probably not even. Or did it not even? Yeah, I don't think it made it. Pity that the world couldn't see the genius, man. <laughs> <laughs> Every scene is the village people. <laughs> this dude turns around with a nightstick and lays a number on you, man. And playing part of the drums, Rodney King. <laughs> <laughs> did you, uh, now obviously you must have been a little disappointed at the uh, outcome of the election. No, oh, did we, in the Ukraine? No, I think they're going to redo it. <laughs> and uh, Yuchenko stands a chance of, uh, of, what of winning the vote. What happens to Oh, he looks like the Hulk. <laughs> he's changing into a superhero villain. I think he spent some time in Brazil eating. <laughs> <You think that? laughs> he's turned green. He's green now. Yeah, he is. And he's got, like, some kind of growth thing. His head is huge. Like as if he, he was turning into uh, the, the thing. Hulk. Remember mm. the thing? Yep. Yeah. I have nothing on that. I'm just commenting on I his, do remember uh, the thing. Physical. Uh, you mean picture. from the Fantastic Four? Yeah. Right. Yes. And it looked like the guy. Well, it's the first time I think the United States has ever been aware of the fact that there is a Ukraine mm -hmm. uh, or, or that it's a country separate from Russia. It um, is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the news just came in. <laughs> uh, you know, good for them. A wildly anti-Semitic country. The Ukraine had, a, I think, a division in the Nazi army during the war. Yeah. That's just because they hated the Ruskies. Mm. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> so, how bummed were you with Bush winning? Well, you know, I'm I'm philosophical about it <clears throat> by adding an extra syllable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I wasn't surprised. No, no, you was weren't. Surprised. No, no, there were people that were surprised. Well, there were these hardcore Kerry people that really thought no, he had a chance. Vincent D'Onofrio wants to blow his brains out. Yeah, He's no. collapsing Rip on the Oh no, yeah. Kerry did have a chance. He got 52 million votes. Uh, I think there was a lot of chicanery in this election too, to be Serious honest. Thing. But everybody's going to jump me and go, <laughs> so you know, I just. <laughs> I'm just going to plow forward and stuff like that. Uh, I think he's going to have a tough road to hoe, as they say, in the next four years. Yeah. Uh, history has proven, if you look at, I don't know, Nixon and Clinton, uh, and uh, that the second term is yeah, is tough. tough. Yeah, Reagan? Very tough. Reagan, the second term, just boom. Yeah. People keep talking about Reagan. They keep saying he was the greatest president of all time, and a lot of stuff that bears no resemblance to reality or whatever happened in factual history <laughs> that he stopped communism 
and the fact that one fifth of the world is communist, I think, sort of belies the fact that stopping is a little strenuous. I, I think what they were talking about, though, <laughs> it's a little, you know, the Soviet Union being communist right. was a little more of a threat. I'd than accept some that, but South that's American. not what people say. You know yeah. how it is on the news and yeah. stuff. People go, "He stopped communism." It's like, not really. There, there go the billion people that are still communist, still um, around. But in any case, yeah, his second term was brutal. Uh, everybody thinks that he was just wildly popular, but the last two years... I just, think the third was term was even tougher on presidents, to tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> he never had higher than a 68% approval rating, I don't think, Reagan. I, I don't know where I'm yanking that statistic at, but he never had a very high approval rating. No, and although I, I think in his when he got reelected, it was a lot m more of a, you know... I don't know if it was a landslide, because I think only 30% of the electorate voted in that election. Yeah. I think you saw a lot more you know, activity in this one. Frankly, I think everybody on every side has reason to be cheerful in that... Over 100 million people voted in this lazy, assed, apathetic, supposedly stupid country. People are motivated and actually True. do know what's going on. I, so I can't see it as the worst thing in the world. Do you think it was a bad choice, though, the Democrats putting Kerry in there? Yeah. I think what was a bad choice was not standing for something. I think the thing yeah. that Bush does that... Uh, that the Democrats never do is is stand for what he stands for, mm -hmm. and you can go fuck yourself if you don't like it. Yep. And uh, that's how I feel about my views, and that's how I feel everybody should feel, because mm -hmm. it's the adult way to feel. If you disagree with me, fine, let's disagree and we'll discuss it. But you disagree, and that's the... Instead of, well, I hope you like me. Well, I'll modify myself so I hope you like me a little bit. Gosh, over there, are you liking me? It's like, any comedian can tell you, 30% of the crowd hates you. And that's even when you're killing. They just, ah, ha, ha, they're going along with their friends, and then when they leave, they go, I hated that guy. And you can't please all the people all the time. And I, and I think the whole idea that... They, they keep trying to reconstitute the party and go, they need to appeal to the young. They need to appeal to the Bible Belt. They need to, nah, they need to stand for something, man. Yeah, that's what if he'd gone, I'm against the war, and that's what I'm against, and I'm for this, instead of, well, we did this, but we should have done it like that. It's like, yeah, very wishy washy. You know, yeah. Bush gives a simple message, man. He's going to kill sand monkeys, and, he, and <laughs> Jesus is his pal, and guns are good, and God damn it, that resonates with people. That's his message, and that's what he stands for, and everybody knows it, and there's no quibbling. He's wishy-washy on immigration. That's the only thing. Like, there's no policy well, with the, uh, the, then he was, needed the Latin vote. I hope that's I need some Mexicans, so yeah. by the way, everybody gets a right. free pass for two weeks. Yeah. Oh, no, he's not above like simple chicanery in politics every second of his life. <laughs> I'm just saying that... You know where he's coming from. We said yeah. that about Curry. Just say something. He just wouldn't say anything. He, he was an intelligent man, and that's a threat to a lot of people. This is, as you know, uh, the country's kind of a... They like it simple. The idea that... This is what killed me, was Lynn Cheney, who is, I understand, Dick Cheney's wife. Um, <laughs> she, uh, she was, they were having a rally for Cheney, and who couldn't vote for him? He's affable and warm and lovable, and clearly, <laughs> clearly possesses the leadership qualities to make this country great. Um, rubbing his hands together like Mr. Burns, it took him 20 minutes to stand up. If he doesn't resign in the first two years, I will lay you money on the opening, opening and Anthony show, the Jimmy Norton show, opening, that he will resign. I mean, we've already had... All the rats are leaving the ship. Yeah, You've already true. seen this, and you yeah. knew this would happen, that Powell split and Tom Ridge. Mm -hmm. Ashcroft fantastically saying, the object of securing the American people to security uh, has been achieved. Thanks. Well, I'll, I'm sleeping well now, John. I'll, I'll be humming one of your hymns as I nod off. And I'm off. Yeah. He leaves. <laughs> Job well done. Pats himself yeah. on the back. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. I've covered up the titties on all of the statues. <laughs> now we can all rest. The Al-Qaeda will no longer see Oriola. So, uh, <laughs> Lincini, when the campaign was going, said, John Kerry's got a fancy haircut and a fancy manicure. Like, like being fancy was the fancy. crime against you. And like, um, Dick Cheney's a billionaire. I think fancy doesn't, Pretty it depends fancy. on what but you perceive as fancy. Yeah. So that's where the dividing line is. The fact that John Kerry speaks French, is an intelligent person, mm -hmm. and equivocates, um, basically did hi didn't do him any favors no. but again I, I wouldn't say it was a landslide or a mandate a landslide's when 80 percent of people think one thing not 49 percent yeah, yeah. to 51 no, is it not. was close if but... i have 11 guys and six of them agree with me and i tell you that's a mandate you might have something to say about it. yeah <laughs> although the yeah. american public did go for clinton twice and he was definitely brighter than bush senior i agree uh, you know what i mean so sometimes they like a smart guy i mean who else do, who did he run who did he beat in uh, the second election i'm doing uh, you know what he had though oh, uh, Bob, clinton, yeah, Bob clinton Dole. had it was charisma you yeah. know he had something oh, you got to appeal huge rock star great you politician. gotta appeal to the people based on what they like 
And and you got to look at the majority of the American people. What do they like on television? What do they like? Uh, Tough to crowd. Read? What do they like to? Be? No, sorry. No, they no, used to. Not anymore. Not it's like you said. The, the simple problem. stuff. The stuff they can really sink their teeth into. Yeah. They don't want to hear stuff that's going to confuse them. They don't want to hear intellectuals. They don't. Yeah. They want something charismatic. They want an easy catchphrase. They want something simple, something they could all get behind, something that fits on a bumper sticker. Something. You know, it's, it's that kind of stuff, and that's going to win. I think Clinton messed things up, though, uh, and, and Jim's right, because Clinton is probably the brightest president we've had since, I don't know, what do you want to go back to, Carter or whatever. I mean, the guy is acute. Um, I like and, how you go right back to a Democrat. No, I, believe, I noticed like, that. Well, never, <laughs> never go Nixon back. Nixon was a bright guy. Well, intelligent Nixon too. was very bright. But yeah. Nixon proceeds. We can go back to Nixon. Nixon was very bright. And KG, obviously. Uh, uh, like Clinton, a lawyer. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, Clinton ruined it for everyone because he was all things to all people. And then the next Democratic candidate you bring up after him, you've just had Mick Jagger, the candidate. Right. And now you're bringing out Stiff. Eddie Money. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you, you, it ain't happening the second time around. Like, dude, no one had the all-encompassing cock that Clinton has. I mean, that guy was sexy to everybody across the board. And, uh, you know, Bob Dole is a perfectly fine candidate for president, yeah. quite frankly. Uh, not that I would have voted for him, but... He'd been in the Senate a thousand years. He knew yeah. everything about government. You know what I mean? Like he's a very honest guy. He's a very sincere you know, guy. I mean, th there's been worse qualified candidates. Horrible patty run. cakes player. <laughs> 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 Could, couldn't tell the difference between fake. What was it? Concrete and real concrete. Hey, this is so soft and ah! no one wants to see the eighty year old man fall over. That's oh, bad. That's bad. But he, you know, uh, like I say, I, I think he messed up the curve a little bit. It's going yeah. to be difficult to find someone with his kind of charisma. Mm -hmm. W's got a certain kind of charisma, but not that kind of charisma. It appeals to the middle of the country. Yeah. It really I mean, does. You can, you can argue a lot of elections. Kennedy may not have beaten Nixon at all. And, you know, if you want to go back to the 19th century, there's plenty of contested elections. So yeah. it's a tradition in our country to jerry-rig it. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's good, but, uh, you know, hey. It really does sound like the battle cry of the liberal Democrat, though, the whole, you know, ah, we didn't win, so it's fixed. And I'm sure you hear that. We from, didn't from win, people. and it was fixed, but I, <laughs> uh, I can appreciate, you know, also, like I say, I, I you know, there, at a certain point, I OD'd right before the election, because I, I don't know about you guys, but I was up to my eyeballs in it, and, you Just know, living, it, living yeah. and breathing it, and and now... It's like, you know what? The world goes on. I got stuff to do, and mm -hmm. I'll keep fighting my fight, Time and they do on. their thing. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, uh, it, 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 could, it could be worse. <laughs> All right, that's good. It could be worse. That's a nice campaign that's an slogan, optimistic too. viewpoint. It could be worse. Let's, I want to ask Greg about this, too, because you, you understand how Hollywood works the same way I do as far as the, uh, <laughs> like, as far as the mentality out there. Yeah. Why is there no outcry about what happened to Van Gogh from the, the Hollywood elite? over a filmmaker being killed over views. Oh, well, because one, he, he wasn't American, and two, hadn't made any money in Hollywood. Nah. And he hadn't been there to be celebrated or anything like that. If he'd been uh, in Hollywood and, and, and had made a picture that made, you know, $70 million indie for, you know, Miramax or whatever, then, oh, yeah, there'd been a big outcry. You know how selfish and up there on butt. Well, we were talking about Pat Sajak's article yesterday where he wrote a great point. Pat about Sajak? I know, that's article. what I said. Because like Pat Sajak's writing articles for a conservative uh, publication. Oh, really? Because yeah. I was reading Wink Martindale in The Nation the other day. <laughs> and, uh, a lot of people yeah. extremely <laughs> canny observer of the political scene. It took so long to read that Pat Sajak thing, though, because you had to keep turning. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what a bump. <laughs> All right. I'll give it a wacky, a wacky horn. But he, no, he made a good point about how um, because it was a Muslim uh, murdering somebody. Like, if that was even in, in the Netherlands, if it was right. an abortion a pro, a pro, uh, an abortion, uh, anti-abortion uh, activist who had shot and killed a filmmaker for making a pro, a pro-life, a pro-abortion yeah, uh, movie. We know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> that they would still be up in arms here, but because it was a Muslim, they don't want to be seen as agreeing with Bush on anything, and they just they've kept their mouths shut. You understand what I mean? If it was about something yeah. that was an attack yeah, on the ideology reason, of the left, for some but, yeah, reason, if you saying. if you come out with a view that uh, is against Muslims or yeah. against even not against uh, uh, the whole religion, just against somebody that's Muslim. If you come out with that view, uh, you'll be looking. You'll you'll be looked at like you're aligning yourself with the president. And they are so they so don't want to be aligned by. Uh, well, that's to, also to the president. you have to remember. Pat Sajak's a Hollywood guy, and he feels that pressure of being one of eighteen conservatives painted into a corner in that town, mm -hmm. and they get a little beleaguered sometime and make those really faulty analogies like that, like Mel Gibson coming on TV and going, "If my son was dying, I wouldn't want stem cells." Ah! You're like, e relax, you're rich. It's okay. <laughs> Everything will be all right. Everything's going your way. You got your president. You're, you know, you're good. You, you know. 
Arnold Schwarzenegger is way more representative of what a, a conservative in Hollywood is like. In other words, hey, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even go stump for Bush, but for like two days, because he knows he has to stand for re-election in California. Too many pictures of him with his arm yeah. around Bush in California, and it's like, okay, yeah, great for you. True. He's yeah. very popular, though, man. I like Schwarzenegger. Everybody seems to like him. He's pretty like, moderate. Yeah, you know, that's what I mean. He's, he's a Hollywood Republican. Yeah. Do, do what you like. We're smoking pot. Hey, right on. <laughs> As long as he can put Ator at the end of everything he says. As long as he can and use I'll be back. I'm the yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the crowd, again, see, it's what I was saying before. The crowd love it. See, there you love are. It. You're talking about Pat Sajak and Hollywood and how Hollywood won't do anything. And then during the Republican National Convention, it was Hollywood's pure evil and people's morals aren't for Hollywood. And yet they had Arnold Schwarzenegger speak as a keynote speaker at the Republican National Convention. A man who's been governor for less than two years. And yeah. has no history as a politician whatsoever. Suddenly he's asked to speak yeah. there. Funnily enough, because of his Hollywood fame. Right. Of those morally uplifting movies like Predator and, and all those. Morally <laughs> uplifting. Kindergarten the, Cop was good, though. Kindergarten Cop was superb. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like, like the, the Schwarzenegger the action I movie? love Greatest I love Predator. Predator. Get to the chopper. I love the Predator. That's actually I think that's ever. my favorite one of all of them. The Do first one. you love that one? one. Yeah, yeah. Which one? Predator, because he covered himself with mud, and the Predator mm -hmm. can see him. Oh, yeah, yeah. And our old governor would have never thought of that. Man. Uh, <laughs> Greg Davis would just be a glistening no, be sitting there skull getting on the trophy shelf, man. <laughs> just picked clean, you know what I mean? Spine right out, sure. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, but I know what you're saying. and Well, that, that's the... Yeah, that... that the, the, what was that filmmaker's name? Van Gogh, Van Gogh right? Yeah. Which makes it easier for Americans, because the only other famous Dutch person ever. I know. <laughs> no, most people didn't even know about the story, because they well, see related. Van Gogh and think He's it's... He's a yeah, descendant of related, yeah. 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 yeah but Thank goodness like it wasn't Rutger Hauer. <laughs> 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 Rutger Hauer. <laughs> 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 see the Netherlands? <laughs> Jerome Crabay. Wow. All right, we should take a break. All right. No, 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 no. No? <laughs> we'll get out of the politics thing. <laughs> Okay. What the F is this? We're back with the Opie and Anthony Show, the ONA virus spreading across America. Thanks to XM Satellite Radio. Dance music. We love the satellite radio, Greg. It's Greg Proofs in the studio. Hello. Playing Caroline's all this weekend here in New York City. Uh, for tickets, 212-757-4100. The instant feedback ha has exploded. Oh, yeah. Greg is getting the people to react. I told you. I, I said yesterday that uh, the show was going to be a lot different than yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Larry the Cable Guy. Getting props, I, I have to say, because uh, the Southerners and the truckers loving Larry, the cable I guy. I the and, Southerners, too, baby. And, uh, well, people think all kinds of weird things about me. Like, I walk into rooms. And, I played Houston this year, uh, North Carolina, Atlanta. Yeah. And I murder. Yeah. It's all good. I was people, at the Co Montreal Comedy Festival. I, I guess that's uh, two summers ago now. He freaking killed. Sure. Love your humor. People think the country is divided into red and blue, and that's all nonsense. There's... Pockets of insanity everywhere. There's a guy <laughs> writing on the instant feedback. Carter was intelligent. You could hear a banjo every time he opened his mouth. Get it? <laughs> wow! <laughs> That's then, funny. And then Tom from North Carolina. Because I could hear a stapler during that email. Another thing <laughs> Kerry had going for him was his run as Lurch on the Adam's Wait family. a minute. You're saying that Kerry looked weird? Like a giant <laughs> head from Easter Island, perhaps? <laughs> that he posed for the five? <laughs> Let me get this straight. He debated Douglas? <laughs> You're saying Gary had a thing in <laughs> And people are begging that we get some truckers on the on the show. <laughs> Just I to balance truckers. this out. So well we can How on. would a trucker balance me out? That's what I like. That's to what know. they're saying. I don't know. Political. Let me tell you. Won't you leave the goddamn country if you don't like it? Yeah, I love that viewpoint. Yeah. yeah. Because all my tax money's here. <laughs> yeah, I, I paid in advance to stay. I do like the celebrities, though, that said they were leaving the country. If uh, That's a very ill-chosen stance to take really, before an election. Really, really bad, because so, no one forgets talk it. Talk about slippery slab. I'm, going, I'm moving to France. Well, I'm not moving. I'm just going to go on a holiday there and then come back and sulk. I'm eating French bread, okay? That's <laughs> as far as I'm going. Let's talk tabloids. All righty. Let's move on. Oh, here. Well, Greg said uh, he's got celebrities. Um, I was looking through the Daily News here, uh, which is a um, it's a fine newspaper. It's all ads. Oh, newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> newspaper. Is that what it is? It's you know, nice. Can I tell you something? We, yeah, buddy. We consider ourselves uh, intelligent on this radio show, but huh. 
Well, on look this around radio the room. Show. We got we got the Daily News. We got the New York Post. And look what paper hasn't been opened yet today. Day. No one's no, the, New the New York Times. The New York Times. <laughs> oh, yeah. you, you can't believe anything that's in the New York Times. The Times remains folded every day. Every day. Well, all, all the no news that's fit up. to print. The, a guy told us that you don't know, but never mind. We'll <laughs> verify it later. And <laughs> We use, the New York Times to cover up, we use the New York Times to cover up the windows when we get um, girls in here. Sure. Yeah. There you are. And that, that, that infrequent occurrence is only what? Like every time there's a solar eclipse or something? <laughs> yeah. Well, we got girls tomorrow. Oh, hooray. Who do you have tomorrow? Two Some. porn stars, and we're going to do cherry darts. Ch cherry darts? Yeah, we have this nice, intelligent conversation going on today, whether you agree or disagree. And then tomorrow we got guys throwing cherry darts at naked girls' uh, buttholes. How come I miss that day? How come I get intelligent conversation? Who says I don't want some cherry darts in my life? I threw an almond roca at Jenna Jameson once, man. Nice. I got How about all. this? We'll extend the invite. You want to come back tomorrow and throw some cherry darts? You can. All right, let me think about it, man. Because right. I, I got to just to show the other side tomorrow. of Greg Proops. <laughs> I'm making pancakes for the Cubs tomorrow, and I got stuff to bring do. a few I... of them, and I'd love to toss something into their <laughs> tiny hairless backsides. <laughs> which which adult film stars have you tomorrow? Uh, some girl named Star. Yeah. I thought you said star porn stars. And yeah, I know. I said some girl named Star, and I'm yeah. trying to remember. Yeah, but they're not yeah, but quite. Star. Point together, they're not heard famous. of them. Should there? No, her name is Star. Shouldn't their legend proceed? We, we would rather not have um, the stars. We would rather have the girls that are actually going to do some really yeah, nasty. We, we like stuff. a little skank in our women. I see what you're saying. May yeah, I, a little skank. Sure. May I peruse? You could have a porn star come in here and then tell her, you know, we really want you to bend over. We want to throw a cherry and see how close we can get it to your bunghole, and we want listeners to do it to win prizes, and then. Uh, They'll say no. You're like, but well, you're uh, a porn star. Can we say bunghole? Uh, this, it's difficult to tell what this woman, is her name? That's Candy. Oh, that's Candy. Yeah, Candy. Mm. They always have those names. They're always named Fluffy and Pinky and Candy and stuff like that. Notice no one's, no porn star's named Gertrude or <laughs> yeah. uh, Bertha anymore. Not a lot of Ethel's. You know? <laughs> right, not right. Uh, hey, Ethel. You can, no you, Miriam's down yeah, there. Hey, you can't tell what she looks like because she's completely upside down. And do you know Terry yeah. Weagle? Who she is? Yeah, yeah I remember yeah, yeah. Terry Weagle. She, she blew me on a, I was on an internet radio show and uh, with actually Chauncey Hayden, and she was uh, she said she'd give us Hummers, and she uh, she did it for like a second. Her husband was there. I was packing like one. I couldn't even get the rubber down. I rolled it down once, and I couldn't, but she blew me for a minute, so that was a portion. Did Chauncey second. blow you too? No, he didn't. Fucking asshole. Okay, I shouldn't have mentioned Can't his name. Stand just, that guy. I'm just saying that that was the show uh, I did, and she blew me. What a tool. Yeah. That doesn't take away from oh, my look at that. It totally took away from your Hummer story. No. And took the comedy out of the room. Candy is 19 years old. And only been in porn for three months. Where do you find these girls, oh, Steve? Stop it! That can't be. Uh, this is the guy that finds all our porn, Greg. Uh, don't get too hey, close man. to his hat; you'll <laughs> scorch yourself. Every day he has to have some kind of flaming wear on. It's a look. Today it's the uh, hat. Yesterday, do you have the boots on today? No, no, the boots are getting um, stretched, so they don't. Give I me thought you were getting sword. more fluid put into them. Oh, <laughs> See, it's like a lighter. Yeah, uh -huh. I know. Uh -huh. I, I got that one. Uh, butane, I should have said. You have to, um, you have to endear yourself to the guys, to the directors who know these girls. And a lot of the girls are, you know, are fresh faced 18, 19 year old girls. And that's where, that's where the 19 year old candy came from. So she was what, in high school. She gets out and then decides porno. Yeah. Been in it for three months. Mm hmm. Very nice. Uh, a trucker that does like Greg. I knew they were out there. Johnny, of what's up? Of course they are. Hey, bud. I absolutely love you, Greg. I, uh, saw you on, um, uh, whose line is it anyway? Thanks, brother. And I absolutely love you on there, and I just want to redeem the truckers. Thank God you guys actually have some intelligent conversation, intelligent guests. Because you know what? I couldn't stand Larry the Cable Guy yesterday with his set me up with his fucking jokes, and then you guys just knock him the fuck down. <laughs> <I still> hear <laughs> <laughs> wow. I liked Larry, too. We enjoy Larry. That's what I like about the show. Every Thank day you, is a John. little different. Every day is a little different, and tomorrow it's a bagatelle <laughs> of cherry darts. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> come one, come all. <laughs> Cold-hearted, the trucker. One more here. Let's go. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, uh, hey I think you guys ought to use Greg as a substitute if Jimmy calls in sick or has to go on tour because he's a funny bastard. Yeah, Greg is very funny. I never call in sick, and I never go on tour for that one reason. <laughs> Believe me. I know they're going to put some other comic in here, and then she'll be like, ah, take a couple days. Yeah, relax. Guy's pretty, <laughs> guy's pretty funny. Yeah, I know. Say, man. Just to break it up a little bit. You, know? you can never <laughs> take a day off, man. <laughs> no, not, that's the old Hollywood <laughs> creed. Look, you're doing a terrific job. Go to Hawaii for a <laughs> week. Relax. I've got a quick, stupid question for Greg. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, that movie Little Nicky, the guy with the glasses, 
that they were giving a hard time. That wasn't you. No, that was wasn't me. Was that Andy Dick who was in Little Nicky? I don't remember. No, I didn't, I didn't I see Little Nicky. I would remember, Andy though, Dick. because I'd be getting the checks from the DVD. So it wasn't me, brother. But thanks for thinking of me. And Did Jerry. confuse you with uh, Andy Dick? No, never. Oh, I nice. was just guessing who who wears glasses <laughs> that was in the movie, man. There's a... Jerry in Jersey. What's up? Hey, how's it going, fellas? Hey. Good morning, sweetie. Hi, Angel Face. Um, yeah, oh, I was can... just... Uh, uh, actually, two quick questions. I was wondering... Um, uh, what what you're doing on a radio show since you uh, starred in uh, Star Wars uh, uh, Episode One, The Phantom Menace? What I'm doing on a radio show because of that? Well, uh, I like to visit the regular people once in a while. <laughs> I like to walk amongst the, uh, the the dirty, scruffy workaday blue collar guys. <laughs> I lay my hands on the afflicted, and they're cured. <laughs> All right. Uh, but, uh, Star Wars was good fun. Uh, believe me. It, it oh, you were in that? I was in the, I think, what I would consider everyone's favorite episode. That would be The Phantom Menace, mm -hmm. possibly the finest motion picture ever made. Uh, <laughs> apparently, some of the plot was destroyed on its way to the theater in a horrible <laughs> accident. So oh. it was a little confusing. Uh, yeah, I was a I was a pod race announcer in that. Oh, one. cool! I don't care what galaxy you're from. That's gotta hurt. That was my voice. Really? Oh, that was you. Yeah. I didn't know. They CGI'd our heads out, but we did wear giant. We shot on the day, and we wore giant uh, prosthetic heads that they made for us at Leavesden outside of London. And um, we it was me and another comic named Scott Capuro, who's from San Francisco, and we were the voices of the pod race announcers. That is probably we were both the working in Scotland at the time, and they cast it over there because. Uh, they shoot overseas. You've just been brought up 20 levels. Yeah. Oh. There you are. I was also in The Nightmare Before Christmas. I'm several voices in that. I get, I get a good voice, voice every work. once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. How was George yeah. Lucas? Very relaxed. You should be so relaxed with $200 million on the line. Really? Yeah, he walked in. He went, that was great. You want to shoot it again? Okay, George. <laughs> that was it? Yeah. Okay, George. Yeah. There was like 100 people standing around, a blue screen. You know, nothing was shot like a movie. It wasn't like, you know, I wasn't... It's all blue. Did screen. he get to yeah, call him? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't holding Lucas Alicia Cuthbert in my arms or whatever. You, you get know? to call him George too. Yeah, all casually. Hey, man, he's from the Bay Area. We're all from the Bay Area. It's you don't you know it's that. Hey, Something how you to doing? Talk about. It's a liberal, Is that how you liberal, got the gig? liberal fascism. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll tell you how I got the gig. I have an American accent, and they were looking for American accents in England. Oh wow! And really? Me and the other guy are comedians, and we made up stuff. And we're, so we were able to both do sports announcers and go. He's got the funk in his trunk. He's got the skills to pay. You know that. Wow. Nonsense. Looks like chicken, tastes like chicken, booyah. And you couldn't have a, and I think they wanted American voices for the, that's my guess. That's my guess. Yeah. Because it was a pod race and it's mm -hmm. like a car race. Oh, you don't you, gotta tell me. You want people I to know. Sing. So that it's not, you know, John Gilgood announcing the car race. And <laughs> Do they have I dialogue for you? Great deal of excitement as they <laughs> go around the far turn here. He plays it square. <laughs> um, did they what? Have dialogue for you or did you improv it? Well, uh, they would get mad if we said we am. There was there was a cre there was creative latitude. Okay. So we were we were allowed creative to latitude. We yeah. were allowed to do some stuff. But yes, there was dialogue. Obviously, they had written uh, mm -hmm. uh, all the names of the characters and all that, and it was fun. You know, yeah. it was only one day's work. What I do have is the polar fleece. This is for the geeks out there. I say geeks. I hate that word, but this is for the devotees out there, for for the for the for the faithful. Uh, Star Wars. Uh, polar fleece that says episode one and if Star Wars fans will know what that means it didn't have a name it wasn't called the Phantom Menace until right before it got released and as you know the chronology is goofy whatever the first mm -hmm. Star Wars is actually number four, four four so carrying on backwards I was in the first one right even though it's the not yeah just so that's very I'm, I think thing. I've lost everybody but the Star Wars people know what I'm talking about so I possess a piece of gear that does not say the Phantom Menace it says episode one on it and I think if you went on eBay which I would never do it's in my closet but so that's an exciting yeah. piece of uh, <clears throat> Star Wars trivia put it up and see what but they bid I get the, the Star Wars thing gets more my agent in England said don't do it why <laughs> it doesn't it's not this it's not that it's not this oh. I said it's Star Wars. It's Star Wars, and you idiot. For the rest of no my life. Star Wars? Right. I can go to Japan <laughs> and, and sign autographs. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and, and everybody knows it, like, ever. So, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, why would I say no? I had to do it. Hell yeah. It was great fun. And, and uh, I'm glad that anyone liked it. Uh, Just being part of uh, the yeah, whole Star Wars thing. Hell, I, you know. You got to do it. Yeah. So, exactly. It, it was fun. Do things and don't even get paid for and, it. For instance, I, was, I did a voice in another picture that came out that sank so quickly like a stone called Kaina the Prophecy. Catchy name. Mm. I know you're thinking, how come I didn't hear about it? It sounds so sexy. Mm. 
<laughs> the word Kaina and prophecy in the title yeah. of the movie? How did I not get out How did there? it fail? Uh, Kirsten Dunst was the lead in it, Angelica Houston. It was Richard Harris's last picture. Me and another guy named Mike McShane, who's also an improviser. He was on the British News Line, a big guy. And we were... These were, it was a crazy, like, they live on a planet. It was a cartoon. I'm sorry, it was an animated feature. Right. And uh, it was <laughs> like a French thing. And it finally got released this year. We worked on it like three years ago, and it just, poof, you know, like, into the void. Tank. But I thought that was a good one, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you just you don't have no know. idea when you're doing stuff what's going to... Obviously, when you do Star Wars, you have a pretty good notion that people are going to see it. Yeah. But with the Kyena thing, I thought, hey, Kirsten Dunst is in this. Can lose. <laughs> right. Uh, not that I thought I was going to get famous or anything. I just thought someone... I haven't seen it. That's how obscure it is. I think it's on DVD. One of the things was uh, uh, a movie um, Jay Moore did, Pay It Forward. Remember oh, that? Yeah, Spacey, remember Kevin, Spacey. He was like, Spacey. He was pushing this, like saying, Kevin Spacey coming right off his Oscar win. Uh -huh. This is going to be huge. And, and you know, I was thinking, wow, yeah, that's a great... Uh, right. a Helen great Hunt, hit. two yeah. Oscar winners. This is going to, you know, boost him right over the top. Haley Joe Osment was in yeah, it, too. Yeah, yeah. Little no. cute little kid. It got paid forward right from the theater to the blockbuster <laughs> in about a week. Yeah. It was awful. Uh, that's the thing about Chevin is people always go, how come you did that terrible thing? And it's at the time, I think, you think... You don't think I'm doing a terrible thing. You think I'm doing something that everyone will enjoy. And then late, huge. Yeah, 40 years later, it gets exhumed. Maybe it'll be a cult classic one day. One never knows. Never know. So well, you know, there's no... You so you're complain. looking at the tabloids, right? There in the Daily News? Yes, I am. That's where we were going, right? Oh, yeah. Let's go there. With the Paris Hilton and, uh, and the Olsen twins and... Uh, 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 am I wrong, or just people perv on the Olsen twins a little more than I'm comfortable with? Quite frankly, uh, well, no, well ever we since had they turned eighteen. Ever yeah. since it's, 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 not, not, know, it's look, not a big deal anymore. And it's they, not they hot have anymore. giant heads and skinny little tootsie pop bodies, and <laughs> they never developed like they thought they were going to develop. Is what it comes well, down. They to. They shiver. They're like who's from Whoville. Is what they look like <laughs> to me. They have giant yeah. eyes. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they're perfectly nice people, but it's just so pervy to me. This whole country's so pervatronic. And they're like, Lindsay Lohan, you got big ones. I was like, we love her, though. They're teenagers, admit it. man. I'm old enough to be their dad. Yeah. People come up yeah. to me that are that age and go, he reminds me of my dad. Mm. <laughs> and you're like, Ooh. yeah, you know, it makes you leak clear stuff, doesn't it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fair enough, you know. Uh, you're not into, uh, like, the Lindsay Lohan? You don't look at her and think for a split second, like... I, wow, she does have nice it, titties. It, <laughs> like Jimmy Carter, who you could hear banjo music playing whenever he spoke. Um, uh, I, uh, maybe I'll lust in my heart ever so briefly, but no, it's too pervy for me. Yeah. It's too pervy for me. Yeah. Uh, w literally, I'm 45 years old, man. Mm -hmm. Lindsay Lohan you know, could well be my daughter. I think she's in fact, 18. Yeah. Her bad behavior, uh, I think she is. Uh, if I had a daughter, <laughs> I know she'd be a drunk, and I think that's exciting. <laughs> uh, my question is like say you're pa Paris Hilton's parents or whatever Oof. now when you're having the Thanksgiving dinner and everyone's gathered around the you know the drug loaf or whatever it is you're eating <laughs> <laughs> do you have a slideshow? You know, do you, do you like show home movies or whatever? And go, this is her first. Oh, not that one. And then you know, like oh. <laughs> she's so orange and so white haired, and that seems to be this look that all girls have now, like the Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, mm -hmm. Harris Hilton. Orange. Uh, Jessica Simpson. With Jessica Blonde Simpson. Hair. They're like the Eloy that lived on Earth that the Morlocks drove underground right. to eat in the time machine. They had that the time machine. white, white hair and the orange, <laughs> orange skin. There's a Star Trek episode, <laughs> too, with Call or whatever, and they, they drive the white hair. Vol. Vol, that was it. And Vol they, they, puts the fruit on the tree. Exactly. With Skippy, yeah. and they, Kirk punch him in the face. That's what these people are. They're, <laughs> yeah. they're like the cattle of now, and they were, or are going to be driven into a machine so that we can survive on them in the future. <laughs> But I had someone like Paris Hilton as absolutely necessary in society. What would we do if she didn't exist? Who would we pin our hopes and dreams on? <laughs> she appears to have no talent whatsoever right. or in, any reason to exist. She's, Nothing. She's wealthy and she's ephemeral. She's like an anemone in the sea. She's beautiful and yet doesn't really produce that much <laughs> altogether. And now we know that she slept with Colin Farrell. This was duly reported a couple of days ago, like on TV and in the paper. She slept with Colin Farrell, everybody. So I took out my checklist. 
And, you checked know, off Colin right, Farrell. Right, you know, like, well, okay, we're mowing through the... There's only 3.8 billion people left on Earth. And but that gives you a purpose, or it gives her a purpose now. You just have the checklist, and now it gives you something to do every time she does something. She's had two TV series. That'll We're talking about Hollywood. That'll point out to you what's going on in Hollywood. People think that show business is a meritocracy, and they say, that guy's really good. How come he doesn't have a show? Or that actress is really good. How come she's not in more movies? Because... They're not interested in good. Good is the most irrelevant thing in the history of mankind. You get Paris Hilton you, on TV. If Paris TV Hilton shows. makes money, Paris Hilton's on TV. If monkeys banging on a stick were, were what was popular, that's what would be at Caroline's this week. They would not yeah. have comics ever. And they'd have a show on the WB. Oh, dude, they do. <laughs> it's called Monkeys with Sticks. <laughs> Check. <laughs> that, How so, many series have you had, uh, Jim? <clears throat> what? How many TV series have you have you had? Never even been on a sitcom. See, no, I wouldn't I? I would love to tune in and see Jimmy. You wouldn't. On something. My lack of acting ability would really spoil it. I'm a good guy to walk in. I'm like, you know what I mean? Like you were on Ed once. Oh yeah, you. I actually oh, forgot. There you are. Third so episode of Ed. Yeah, I did. I totally forgot about that. You said it. I did a good job on. with that. Thank you. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, but no, I'm not. What was your line? I had. Well, I was in the whole episode. It was me oh. and two other friends were suing. Uh, a, a guy who has actually played Dennis Men Men Dennis Menace's father in the movie. That's the guy who we were yeah. suing, and Ed was the lawyer defending us. We were childhood friends suing the guy for getting rich. Sweet. And uh, I was terrific. Mr. Favisham. <laughs> yeah, yeah, out right, of the right. question. Out of the question. And it's funny how they talk to you. Like, cause we were doing, I guess it was going yeah. well. And they're like, hey, man, they're talking about doing a spin off with you three. You know how full of shit they are on the set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was such a green worm. I'm like, really? Well, maybe we can have our own show. But the three guys right, who sued right. someone. Ugh. And then oh. the next day, can I get back on the lot? No. <laughs> yeah. Nice to put you on. Your name's not on the list. Get out of here. Become a recurring character like so those I first three heard guys you guys. on Newhart. I was listening to you guys, actually, for the first time in the trailer, or the second time I was in the trailer waiting for that shoot. I, I was oh. listening to you. See? You get a trailer. Yeah. This is how good acting is. They and give the food, you a trailer. They give you lunch or whatnot. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they, I mean, press you know, and you're just doing a walk There's nothing better than doing a TV doing show, man. <laughs> Friends. <laughs> that was one of my lines. Like, yeah, right. Friends. Ugh. I'll bring it in someday. See? I like how you delivered Acting. that. You never saw yeah. that episode? No. Very convincing. You should no. bring that in. Yeah, you yeah. should, man. Uh, I'd like, yeah, we, we got to play that. On the line reading. <laughs> that's the best we definitely got to play it on the I was on a Family Matters. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, that's fantastically. a cartoon, right? Huh? Is that a cartoon or no? No. No, no the one that, with Urkel, man. That was the Urkel oh, show. The TV show with Urkel. That was great. Then man. Urkel turned into a man and ruined the show. Yeah, it was toward the end, and he was. it was a Stefan Urkel because he had that alter ego that was a smooth operator. That was him saying, I don't want to be this gleeby guy. Dork. It was or, uh, great. It was it's great. Kind of, it's I kind of, still get checks from that. That's like Vic. Wow. Uh, Vic you know, little checks. What right. was his name when he became Vic on Taxi? That's like what a yeah, yeah, yeah. did. You get sick of being the cute guy, and then you're like, you want to be the. Uh, yeah, the I'm other serious. Tough guy. Take take me for more than I am. I'm an yeah. artist. That always works. Well, well, see, that's the thing. You know, people go, "Oh, you're on the show," and then, "Oh, I I don't want to be identified with whose line. Whose line's not my line." Like, hey, fuck it. Whatever you, if you dug whose line, right on. You know what I mean? And. The two people that I use is Adam West, who played Batman on the old series mm -hmm. when I was a kid, who was my hero. When I met him, uh, I met him years ago in England, and, I, and he did a reading of his book, which was Back to the Bat Cave. He couldn't be happier. He's not bitter at all. And then William Shatner, who I've also met and did a TV show with once in Scotland, couldn't be happier to be Captain Kirk. Oh, Signing yeah. autographs. You know what I mean? It's the people who played, like... You know, Snoogie on the Fwiggles. And they go, Man, I loved you as that kid. I'm not really Snoogie. I'm a Shakespearean. <laughs> hey, dude, to the world you are. You know what I mean? You know Be tip? happy that you have any truck with the public at all. If the public likes you one iota, don't piss yeah. on that. You know what I mean? Screech hates being Screech. Dustin Diamond, yes. Dustin you know what Diamond. I mean? And what's his name? Mark, uh, who used to play Skippy on. Mark Price. He tried oh, to get yeah. out of that. And then yeah. you realize, like, yeah, because he does stand-up and stuff. It's like, no, you yeah. gotta embrace that, man. It, you don't want to be it your whole life, because obviously you have a life, but, like, if that's what people like you for, that's what I say. Like, I did 14 years on Who's Line, so, hey, really? right on. Oh you know what I mean? Yeah! And I never worked on it for more than two or three days a year. Man, and but everybody thinks I did it every day of my life that I punched in with a time clock and wore a hard hat and like and right on, you know. If you like the show, you like the show. Yeah. Who am I to tell you that your taste, you know? Actually, I'm a stand-up comedian, and my pithy insights are, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like child actors. brother so below me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I tell dick jokes in bars to drunks. So, you know, <laughs> hey. That's how it works. Most of the guys, the child actors, the child actors if, hate if they, yeah. yeah, but if if they don't blow their brains out, they always end up finding some peace, like years and years down the road. 
You know, they never get to it right away. It's oh, usually no. just this horrible e true Hollywood story, and then uh, you know, years later, they're like, "Well, you know, I'm glad I was Skippy or you know whatever other." That's why Jody Foster's amazing. Like, Jody Foster yeah. made the transition from like childhood to adulthood. Some of them can do it. She yeah. said the most interesting thing I thought because Hollywood is such a cosseted place where everybody's kept from the reality, and you know, people don't. People who you wouldn't even believe, I won't say, but like have assistants. Like you'll call someone who you thought was like your friend and they have an <laughs> assistant and you go, well, I don't want to deal with your assistant because I was going to ask you if you wanted to go, you know, <laughs> but she said, uh, uh, Jodie Foster said, I go deliver my own. I go to the post office. I go shopping. Uh, which I, uh, no one should get an award. Do you think for these she things. does or just no? Says no she, that she does, does dude, yeah. and she takes care of her kids. You see her with her children and stuff, or pictures of her with her children. And I, I don't think she was asking for a claim for it, and no one should. But the point is, in Hollywood, people don't. Yeah, people don't go to the post office. They have excised the things from their lives. She said, "This is what your life is. Your life is doing your laundry. Your life is picking up your dry cleaning. And when all of a sudden you don't do any of those things anymore." Then you're just laying, you know what I mean? You've, you've infantilized yourself to the point where you're like, and you my art Barbara is so Streisand. important. I pretend to be other people, you know? Right, right. <laughs> like, uh, get a grip. You know? Yeah. Like, I'm buddies with Drew Carey, and Drew Carey is the deal. He doesn't, you don't get an assistant when you call him. You get him on the phone, and when yeah. he wants you to do something, he calls you because you want to do this thing. You don't have to go through a big dance or anything like that, and people go, what's he like? It's like, no, he's really like that. You got he drinks number? beer, and he's a nice guy. Just what? Got his number then? I just want to kind of call We'd him. Like to oh, yeah, of course. I'm giving you... I'm going to give it out on XFM. He asked me to. He said, what What I don't want is any privacy, Greg. I want everyone in America calling me. No, but he's 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 really lovely with people and stuff like that. So, you know, I think I got lucky with the... Right on. My millionaire friend is nice. Yeah. All right, let's get... Let's <laughs> he doesn't get, shine me. Let's get Greg out of here. Till we're this, done. Uh, this was excellent. You want to oh, come back tomorrow for cherry darts? Oh, do I? Come back tomorrow. <laughs> Do I? We want to see the other Do side I? of you. We want to see uh, what kind of aim you have. You ever have. play Lemonhead Submarine? What's that? Would you stand beneath them? You take a mouthful of lemon heads. They stand over you. You guys are all looking at me like this is really a game. I'm I know. Listen, I know. We're yeah, all fascinated. That's serious. You know what? We're all fascinated. <laughs> we're looking for new games in this program. We're, we're thinking lemon you might heads, have something. Yeah. Lemonhead. Let me write that down. Dude, we were so with you. Come on. Uh, milk dud dump truck. I think you can get the idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jimmy knows. Boy, do I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 400 for that, eh? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. No, this well, was, half and half included. This was great. Uh, Greg Proops, very, very funny guy. Absolutely. He's going to be at Caroline's all this weekend for tickets 212-757-4100. And if you're in the area, stop by tomorrow and throw some darts with us. Thank you. You're very kind. I appreciate it. I, I, I don't know if I'll be able to see Star and Brandy because I think I have an... Um, uh, like I say, I got a Black Panther breakfast I'm doing up <laughs> Very important. over in the Bronx. <laughs> Huey Newton would appreciate this, though. Just humiliate those white bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. Great proof was all right, huh? Yeah. yeah. I liked him a lot. The, uh, the other side sometimes, you know? You get a Larry the Cable guy, and then you get a Greg proof. That's the beauty of the Opie and Anthony show. Every day, something a little different. Can I say, to please the Yankees, Stop with Randy Johnson. He's fucking 41. <laughs> oh, Jesus. God they, almighty, stop I it. I don't think they're going to. Yeah, they uh, bailed on him. Yeah, That's old news. I know, but they but were trying, and every they, year they they're out they're now, They're tempted though. to give up Javier Vasquez. No, not anymore. Stop it. They wanted too much, so they, they're out. All right, they, good. They, they announced today they're out. They're not going to pursue um, Randy Johnson anymore. Good. Enough already. Relax. It's over. He's it, it, still he, in the he, papers. He is really good, though. Dude, I, I don't want him. I hate his I guts. Understand. He's a mariner. Fuck him and fuck Pedro. God almighty. Is there no dignity in sports? No. <laughs> You're right. Of course not. You follow the team that has the less dignity. The less dignity? I know. The, no, the lesser, I don't, I, I don't the like what Steinbrenner does. The lesser of the dignity, dignity that dignity has to offer. You're saying the Yankees have the least amount of dignity in the... Uh... Uh, Major League Baseball? Yeah, they're a bunch of whores. And that's not true, though. When when Dumb Starbender was out, and they built this team of all young players, Bernie, oh, you know, you know who the Yankees, I'm not going to go over for the rest of the country, mm -hmm. but they were all young, homegrown Yankees. That's why they were a great team. Yeah, just and like A-Rod, you know. No, I'm not about, yeah, but Boone went down, Boone got hurt, and then you trade in Soriano, you get rid of him, and you pick it up A-Rod, that's a bat for a bat, you got to go with A-Rod. I love Soriano, but you got to go with A-Rod. Hey. Oh, whatever. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> you didn't think I had an answer for that, did you? Uh, <laughs> smoothies. <laughs> It's smoothie I'm not time. Smoothies. Why? Because to to pick up on where you left off yesterday, I shit Connor Peterson when I got home. All right. <laughs> Enough with the Connor Peterson references. It, it will never get old. Just like him. <laughs>
Oh, God. <laughs> It will always be oh, an yeah. ageless little lump right, of what could right, have been. All right, all right, all right. We get it. Holy we get shit. it. We get it. Grieving grandparents. Oh. Oh. Hey, we got the... Oh. They've been in kindergarten this year, honey. <laughs> Great proofs in studio, playing Caroline's all weekend, starting tonight through Sunday. Wow. Good morning. How many sets you doing? You got 150 one. and uh, wow. there's a St. Patrick's Day fracas. Hi. Yeah. Oh, you're That's playing to that up. crowd. Good luck. Nah, it should be all right. Well, you're in the middle of Times Square. It's it's a little more tame My understanding there. is it's the crossroads of the world. <laughs> we yes. were joking about that earlier. We were talking about that and how... <laughs> Do they... I don't think... Noose and turbans and whatnot. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I don't think Caroline's has that announcement anymore before the shows. Do they not? I used yeah, to love I, that. I know. They used to have this announcement. If you We're in Caroline's here in uh, New York City. We're it was like, you were in Caroline's on Broadway at the crossroads of the world. Yeah. It sounded like you were in the most important place. And then some guy comes up and is like, yeah, how you doing? I'm throwing yeah. a hot dog down a hallway. Crossroads <laughs> of the world. Excuse me. How do I get to Europe from here? Yeah. <laughs> no signage. Yeah. Bill, <laughs> the Bill pointed world. out they have an M&M's factory, basically. Yeah, at, right at down the, the street. It's all at the crossroads yeah. of the world. Yeah. Flip-flops. TGI and tank Friday, tops. hula hands. The crossroads yeah, the of the world garden. really have some guys spray painting planets and unicorns on the street. Yeah, all nations are represented. <laughs> yeah, that's what makes it the crossroads yeah, of the world. You got the naked cowboy over there. And oh yeah, the cowboy. It's great. Pictured uh, statue of George M. Cohn. It's nice. It's great stuff. That's why I like Las Vegas because they have like all the different cities. It's like white trash Europe. <laughs> like I don't need to go over there and go to all of them. I'll go to the New York casino. I've been. To <laughs> Italy, I went to the Venice. Hey, you're making fun of Anthony Paris. now. Anthony does this down in Disney. Oh, that's when I go down to Disney World and go to Epcot. Oh. Uh, why, why travel when Morocco <laughs> is like right next to Germany? With someone in a Winnie the Pooh suit. I could go in there and get a beer stein from uh, a Germany uh, with all the different dates on it. Of, of all the different um, eras in German history, except for one. They leave out in Disney. It seems the 30s and uh, the, the beginning part of the 40s are just no reference made yeah. whatsoever yeah. to Germany at the Germany uh, uh, Epcot. Not so <laughs> many hot memories in the beer garden during that period. No, wow. no. They, they were sold out of the Hitler flask. <laughs> yeah, what happened? <laughs> I want some Third Reich I'm stuff sorry. over there. No Jews in this bathroom, okay? <laughs> no, if you yeah. don't mind. It's it all goes with the theme. There's there's yeah. nothing, you know, don't take it personally, but if you're Jewish, please move down to, like, the American <laughs> section. We, yeah. we don't want you here in the German section. <laughs> nothing to see here. Move along. I'm sure they yeah. leave out a few countries, too. I don't think there's, like, an Eritrea exhibit or something. <laughs> no, nothing like that. The flies off this. <laughs> no, no, there's no <laughs> Sudan. Yeah, you don't yeah, get any of that. Down, sadly. Only the pretty ones, yeah. the nice ones, are represented. Yeah, France. Yeah, and France. Lovely Italy, places you know. like that. Yeah. Italy, you could eat at these places. No Mexico. Yeah. You can eat at these it's places. Wonderful. Yeah. No Estonia. <laughs> I said people are so like uh, conditioned to at Disney to listen to anybody. Like you don't want to break the rules because it's mm -hmm. the happiest place on earth. So uh, uh, I, me and my girlfriend were eating in the Mexican uh, pavilion mm -hmm. in in uh, Disney, and uh, it's inside, yet it looks like you're outside in Mexico. It's like oh. almost like a planetarium atmosphere where it looks. You see a sky, uh, a pyramid type uh, thing in the background, and like a Mayan thing. And um, we're we're sitting there right where there's a ride in the restaurant, a little boat ride that goes through the history of Mexico, and it comes out right next to our table, pretty much uh, in the water. And I would just go because people would kick back in the dark and put their feet up on the boat, and it, like everyone would do this to right. get comfortable. And I would just yell out as they came out, "Feet off the front of the boat, please!" <laughs> and would get shocked and put their feet down and sit up straight. <laughs> and then I just started giving real bad requests, like, "No, no touching other people in the boat, please." When someone <laughs> had their arm around the girlfriend, and someone would look and actually take their arm away. No matter what I said, people were doing. I felt like just go, jump in the water, drown yourself, kill yourself, please. You should have got that on video. They get so scared of breaking Disney rules because, you know, you know, they take you back uh, like old school casinos and break your hands. Mexico. 
What is it? Everything was great, and then white people showed up. It was so, yeah, something like that. How we ruined everything. In that boat that goes by, were people mm. trying to swim across the river? Yeah, they were, sw- <laughs> were trying to swim to freedom. <laughs> they were swimming they to were the American people. Pavilion, Hiring. which was right across. Take them across. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. In the restaurant, they found a truck full of dead Mexicans right. that died from the heat in the Disney's kitchen. Building a wall on one side near the kitchen to keep. Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. The Minutemen. Disney Minutemen. <laughs> I know Disney's history. Fantastic. Hey, you're up on your politics, obviously. We know that. So what do you think? Black president, female president? Is it going to happen this time? Uh, I think a black female president is what Black female uh, president? Just go all out? They're going to take one of the American Idol girls. Oh, yeah. Let's end all the bitching with this election. Yeah. Yeah, let's get rid of the American Idol girls. <laughs> Just want a black female. American Idol, more people are voting for them than vote for the president. So. Melinda Doolittle for yeah. president. Get her. There you go. Well, I think people are ready for a little change, as it were. Uh, although there's no discounting Dick Cheney's wow factor. I mean, he really brings the personality and lights up the night, doesn't Boy, he? Boy, does he. <laughs> Golly, people are into him. And uh, Bush is popular now. It's slightly less popular than what, like testicular cancer? There's actually more people who are for testicular cancer because you can lose weight before the summer comes and get in your bathing suit. Uh, <laughs> He's like not even... It, it, it. A few months ago, even, he was on TV, and people still kind of watched what he was saying. People don't listen to him anymore. Now, no one even listens to anything. He was giving a speech the other day, and I was trying so hard to listen, and it was just... I'm completely at the just shut up point. Just stay in the White House until... Just get this over with and get my uh, show back on, please. Yeah, nothing to see here. Well, they have loads of polls. I think uh, there's polls. Many polls say that people just wish he would it would be over. Basically, yeah, just they've reached get the point it done. Of irrelevance. We're done. Stuff. Well, dude, he went down to South America in the middle of the worst two weeks of his. Ent- I mean, uh, pick your two weeks, but this was a ratty two weeks. Yeah, and yeah. He went to South America, where if anywhere. The only place on earth they hate him more than at home. I mean, if you, if you could have chosen a place <laughs> oh, where yeah. you're going to go where they're going to spit at you and put signs up. My favorite one was Puerco Tirano, pig tyrant. Pig tyrant. <laughs> Puerco Tirano. The charming language. It loses something in the translation. <laughs> I'm sure it's more alliterative. I, it? I need a t-shirt with yeah, that on it. Anytime he's giving a speech in like another country, you can hear the protesters being like hosed off. Oh, like yeah, yeah. The street yeah. is like dogs and stuff. I think America's doing great in Part of the world, you know what it is here. Here in America, when he gives a speech, they like put a perimeter up that's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. When he goes to other countries, they're like, "All right, set these people aside," but you could still hear him in the background. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like you're saying, you hear like the cops firing off tear gas and whatever Who's else. Who's that they guy need to down there? Who just uh, it Hugo Chavez? Yeah. Who's just saying you can smell sulfur? Where he was yeah, standing by the standing podium at the like UN. He's yeah. a political corpse this time. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of saying, because I can no longer smell the sulfur, he's a political yeah. corpse. So basically, the president of Venezuela has written him off as irrelevant at this yeah. point. And he went down to talk about biofuels. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Bi- biofuels. A guy from Texas whose family's in oil went down to talk about biofuels to Brazil. It can make it out of the corn and uh, yeah. wheat. No, he's think. on a roll. He's on a real roll. And I was just in Washington two days ago, and uh, the attorney general came out and said mistakes were made. Yeah. <laughs> my my favorite blanket. Uh, mistakes were made. They used a loophole, I love this, in the Patriot Act to just kind of fire and rehire some attorney generals without without any congressional input or, or you know, having to go before Congress and be approved. And it was just like, well, <laughs> some mistakes were made. And yeah. I think that the, the fact that the Republicans and the Democrats are coming out against this, it proves there's some mistakes. From, yeah. Some mistakes. Why can't we use that in our own lives to yeah. get out of crap? Yeah. Hey, so, you know, I was smoking so some uh, weed and uh, had a brick and I'm selling it to people. Yeah. Some mistakes were made. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're Can free I go? go? You're yeah. free to go, sure. The fact that the cops arrested me shows that some mistakes Some were mistakes made. were made. <laughs> No, it is wild. They they don't admit anything. But I mean, you know, Cheney keeps saying that we're winning the war and that that uh, people who are opposed to the war are what are causing us to lose it. Yeah, <laughs> I, the logic of that is inescapable. I don't. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't see that. We're there, putting the troops in harm's way. You know, I th- <laughs> I, I at this point, 
I don't think it has anything to do with the protesters. I'll be honest with you. I think with all the protesting and stuff, because a lot of people were turned off by the Hollywood, as they call the Hollywood elite, coming out against the war because it's it's business as usual. So people that were for this military operation were like, oh, you know, screw you. These people live in their ivory towers. They don't know what's really going on. But even the hardcore people that were behind this war didn't need to listen to protesters. All you had to do was kind of just watch and say, wow, this ain't working. You didn't need anyone to tell you it's not working. It ain't working. Something is amiss when, you know, they're doing cute little stories on the news, and then as a little tag, you hear 138 people were blown to bits today in Iraq, and... Uh, yeah, children the is, in school. Can and play that, they can play that game because you know, it's not like an army to defeat over there. They're just going to sit no. there picking off our guys. Yeah, it doesn't. There's no winning or losing over there. They're trying to gain control of a situation, which they're obviously not doing. You either got to go balls out or leave. There's there's no middle ground of just let's keep sending dribs and drabs of people there. You want to? You need to occupy a country. By sending in so many troops that you could have them everywhere so no one could put together a goddamn transistor radio wire without you knowing that they're doing something. But they just send enough people. It's just enough people to blow up at random. That seems to be what we're doing. The only way to successfully occupy a country is you have to commit genocide. That's the only way to do it. Yeah, pretty much. Which you don't want to do. So, this, you know, you got to do what we did to the Indians, which was brutal. Or, or Japan. But, uh, I we mean, we wouldn't have St. Louis if we didn't. No. We really, yeah. Hey, good old St. Lou. <laughs> I mean, Japan, you know, you're going back a few years, but, you know, Japan was pretty devastated after the war. And we sent uh, in an occupying force until uh, things got better. Uh, there weren't happy people there. I'm sure all the Japanese weren't walking around going, yay, the Americans are here. We helped them out, though. Oh, but again, yeah, that was a war with well, that's, that's just it. Huh? They keep saying that this isn't a civil war, which is, like, holy oh. fallacious, you know. They're killing they thousands the moment to fight each other. based on just their beliefs. Yeah. Uh, 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 and you don't install democracy. I got news for everybody. Either people want it or they don't want it. You don't come in and go, you're a yeah. democracy now. <laughs> right. Everybody vote. Everybody's <laughs> equal. Yeah. Both the women and the Jews. But we don't want to be a democracy. It's like, wait a minute. We, we need yeah. to kill We need Great to kill point. everybody we don't like first. Right. So then, then we'll be a democracy. I've been yeah, living that's... next door to you for 25 years now, and I finally have the opportunity to kill you. <laughs> Isn't that amazing, though, how that happens? Like yes. uh, That happened mm -hmm. when, when when the whole Russian thing died like in uh, like Czechos Czechoslovakia. I had no idea. Bosnia. And Serbs had oh, no they idea because they had a unified enemy. Let's get these guys out of here. And literally, the second they left, maybe they had some beers for like a week. <laughs> yeah. said, All right, guys, it's on again. We're picking up where we left off yeah. eight it's years ago. That time is over. That's the hard yeah. fact that no one wants to admit is strongman dictators keep little principalities from fighting each other. When Marshal Tito was in the Balkans, there was no war. As soon as he left, Bosnia and the Serbs went at each other. The Croats and the Serbs, mm -hmm. as soon as Saddam Hussein was removed, the Shiites and the Sunnis go at each other like nobody's business. Yeah. Dictators make people afraid of one person. <laughs> right. Yep. There's no getting up in the middle of the night and going over to your neighbor's house and blowing it up when there's a dictator. Yeah. Once the dictator's gone, uh, uh, the game And on. both, both of those sides of have to fight to see, like, to, if, if one side wants democracy, in order to get it, you have to fight the side that doesn't. It's like it, the American Revolution is based on that. The English... We're over here. Uh, Americans who had been here wanted their independence. It wasn't like, you know, hey, okay, there had to be fighting and yeah. horrible war and death and destruction. But th the Americans wanted their freedom. It wasn't like, hey, you want this freedom stuff? You, oh, you, no, want, no. you want, you want some freedom? Take it whether you like it yeah. or not. Plus, the revolution was never overwhelmingly popular even in this country. It was probably about 50, 60 percent of the people that wanted it. Yeah. There was, there was many Tories and people on the English side in America during the revolution. Yeah. That's why it took eight years. And I'm sure they were all doing the Cheney thing in England for the whole eight years. <laughs> Don't worry. It's not a civil war. <laughs> yeah, they win. Yeah. Listen, they're in the last throes of the insurgency. <laughs> last more throws. Months. Let me send a few more boats of troops over. We'll have a surge and we'll fix this <laughs> right up. Mission accomplished. Uh, People are saying we're getting too political. Oh, my God. Sorry. Sorry. This is something that uh, people are very interested in. I know. Didn't we just talk about, like, afterbirth coming up? Yeah, yeah, we yeah, talked yeah, about yeah. afterbirth. We go all over the place. American Idol we we're talked talking about, about. Placenta and Sanjit. We haven't talked politics in so long, and we bring it up because, oh, sorry, there's people uh, dying over there. 
Jesus. Hey, let's say hi to Tim. Uh, Tim, what's going on? Hi, good morning, Tim. everybody. How you guys doing? We're doing good. We got Greg Proops in the studio. Very funny comedian playing Caroline's all weekend. Greg Proops is hilarious. I've he, seen him before. He's, he's, he's killer. That's why I say that first. Thank you, Tim. Hey, uh, really fast before Tim uh, asks his question. Do you just go, like, free form on the stage? Because I've seen you a couple times. And I have material. No, I know you have material, <laughs> but it almost seems like you're one of these comedians that you feel very just comfortable on stage, and you kind of go and really take some chances. Well, I can do. Uh, if I'm feeling it, I'll, I'll go off the book. I don't feel like when I see you that I, it's like uh, set up joke, set up joke. You're kind of going free form and just really getting into some well, really good discussions. In other words, you feel that my act is disorganized no, no, and honestly, I'm joking. And you're, li and you're lazy <laughs> and you don't write. Yeah. Well, if you would write it down on paper, so Greg, like you can remember it from the show. Honestly, like you weren't even prepared. Yeah. Yeah. It's up you there just stammering. Up there it, and you pulled something out of the box and I don't know what was going on. I'll tell you, from where I sit, it's very refreshing because there are comedians that go to Caroline's, I go there a lot, and yeah. I'll see some people year after year, and it's like, oh yeah, my God, it is almost exactly the same uh, set from last year. Yeah, no, I goof around, and I try to mix stuff up, and even the stuff that I know that I do a million times, I try to redo it, and I'm sure we all do. And you try to make it in. With it you like uh, Sting. Yeah. You do a new yeah. version of, like, a reggae like version on a loop of, all my of hair, And I have some talent. <laughs> yeah. And you're not going to pick up a loot anytime soon. <laughs> a so loot. Hey, Tim. A uh, Tim's uh, an Iraq vet there. Tim, what's going on? Good morning, guys. Yeah, I'm a Marine Iraq vet. And uh, just to say that, like, I agree with Anthony's comments that we need to go, uh, I guess, balls out, if I could say that. Uh, yeah. I think the biggest problem, we need to uh, double the deployment time and at least double the, the troop strength over there in order to win this. That's the problem is that we're we're too uh, scared to keep people there for too long because everybody's, you know, they're doing the year deployments with the Army. <coughs> World War II, you were there for deployment, you know, for, uh, sorry, duration. You got the war done because you wanted to come home. That's yeah, I... Done. By the time you get there, you get used to fighting, it's, oh, hey, get ready to pack down, we're going home, the next unit's coming. And you're lucky enough to go back home, by the way. It's one thing or the other. We have to. We we either yeah. have to be an occupying force, with with uh, like martial law and the, the whole deal, or just get out and let them fight it out and see what happens afterwards. Maybe get another dictator in there to rule with an iron <laughs> fist. <laughs> <laughs> but but this strategy isn't working. Well, there was there was no coherent strategy. I think was the problem. And the first Gulf War, yeah. there was overwhelming force. They had over half a million guys there, yeah. a billion countries. Everyone unified. We were in and out. It it took six months, and it, and boom. Yeah, it's like an old Tyson fight. Yeah, for <laughs> second one round. round just <laughs> bam. Bam up. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> Another thing, though, you guys should know as well as anybody about how the media likes to portray something oh, the way yeah. they want it to seem. Mm -hmm. Like when I was there, I was only there uh, back in 2005, and the thing is, a lot of the people really, really do like us there. I, I didn't come across many civilians that didn't like us. I mean, kids, men, women, children, everybody would come up to us and hug us and kiss us and thank us. And it, it was more people from, like, other countries, like, uh, you know, Yemen and Saudi. That's where a lot of these, uh, uh, you know, insurgents are coming from. It's not just Iraqis. It's a lot of people that, a lot of radical Muslims that just don't like us. And that's the battleground is Iraq. A lot of the people really do want freedom and really do support us and, and love having us there. Yeah, it seems like Iraq yeah, has turned into... Out the way they want it to sell papers, the way they want to sell the news. They make it seem like everybody hates us there. Yeah. I mean, I'm still 100% behind the war, and, I mean, it's just the media is the biggest problem with this entire war, and the politicians trying to control the war. Iraq's like Woodstock. <laughs> this is the war we want from. We want this result. Do what you need to do to get it done instead of them nitpicking. That was the problem with Vietnam, and unfortunately we're repeating that because there's too many media and politicians playing a part in the role, uh, playing a part in uh, trying to control a war that generals should, who spent 30 years of their lives in the military should control a war. Yeah, every general that uh, retires or, you know, forced retirement or is removed or something that happens or he just leaves uh, always comes out and says, Boy, they aren't listening to the generals, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're the people that you know. Maybe you should be listening to. It's so political, and once a war gets uh, political like that, it's over. Oh, all right. Was it always like that? Thanks, Tim. Uh, have a good morning, guys. I'm gonna not during the big one. All right. I'm saying, yeah. The they... generals used to go in and go, Mister President, go f yourself. This is what needs to be done. More importantly, Chris... kick your wheelchair over. Yeah. Christine from Jersey wants to know, uh, you know, about your hair there, Greg Proops. She loves your hair. Who, who does your hair? 
I do my hair, uh, <laughs> but I have a small midget that I carry around in my suitcase with me, Otto of Secaucus. Just in case. Just a small Polish boy. And Touch he, up. Uh, yeah, he climbs on top of my head. and uh, We love the midget. Shellac. We love the midget. Uh, Big fans of the midget on yeah. the show. Different variety of products, a little spiker, a <laughs> uh, little, little spray. Uh, it's not as high as it was, but uh, I'm going for some uh, vertical clearance. This some week. height, yeah. A little Jimmy Neutron <laughs> action. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Think of Johnny Depp boy. and uh, Cry Baby. Yeah. Uh, Brett, what was the Brad Pitt movie? There was a, ni- a 90s one where he had a big... Uh, Johnny Sweet. Thank you. Wow, we got a Brad wow. Pitt fan. Man. Oh, my God. Huh? Man. Johnny Sweet. Cowboys. What the hell was that? Wow, Johnny he Sweet couldn't wait to Brad tell Pittman us the answer to that. Wore a, a giant booth in it, and he looked awesome, it has to be said. Yeah. He had a tremendous wall of hair. <laughs> I'm a big fan. My wife wants it down more, but I, I still like it big. What can mm-hmm. I tell you? For me, it's all about the early 60s. What else is yeah. on your mind these days? We did the politics. Yeah. and uh, We did the war. Got into that morass of non-humor that I'm so famous for on your <laughs> show. Don't people. worry. We'll tell everyone how funny you are. Well, I mean, you're, you're, I this is intelligent that. conversation. But Thank anything you. else that you're thinking about these days? Anything on TV that kind of nah, strikes you? That's it. Really? No. <laughs> Not thinking about anything else. Got <laughs> <laughs> <And> nothing. <laughs> I got nothing else. Sorry, I made myself hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> got no opinions, n- no act. Tell you the no, truth, no, no, right. no, everything's cool. I mean, I don't know what everybody's so upset about about <laughs> TV and everything. People uh, are just upset in general these days. No. You see a lot of sad people walking around the streets. I, I'm happy to be alive. <laughs> Sorry, that's like the worst attitude a comedian can possibly yeah, have in the history of comedy. Hey, everything's cool. What's going on with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you ever notice when things are great, candy tastes so good? <laughs> yeah, it's no I problem. Don't Enjoying yeah. your food down there? All right, me too. Anyways. <laughs> I don't no. find anything ridiculous. <laughs> no, nothing's funny. Nothing is absurd. Nothing I love Tyra mad. Banks because, and this is what we, we were talking can't about. can't get enough of Tyra. I can't get enough. Black History Month was about her wearing a bikini. We did a whole and then, thing. Uh, I mean, that's fantastic. It, she is, uh, I don't think there's ever been a more self-absorbed person in the history of talk. It's like she's breaking new ground. It's absolutely the most innovative talk show in the history of talk. Every even, situation. Oh, uh, yeah, or, or even Kathy Lee in the old days. Someone would say like, oh, my father got shot. And they go, that's terrible. If you say my father got shot to Tyra, she goes, one time I was at the movies and I saw a guy get shot and I know what it's like. Like, what? You, you, it doesn't matter. My, my, I have cancer. One time I uh, felt really bad and I sat on a Snickers bar and it felt like cancer. And you're like, what? They she, sold an autograph. She History Month as you wearing a bikini? And she was crying and she thought this opened up doors for other, what, whores out Practic- there? I mean, she's practically Harriet Tubman. Yeah. She really yeah. is. Just so, like. She's Sojourner Truth, man. Right. At one point, they Dr. sold King. an autographed poster of me at a at a charity for cancer. Uh, yeah, she I always know. makes it about herself, no matter what yeah. what what is being discussed on the show. She wore a fat suit for mm. a couple hours. Yeah. that gave her insight into what it's like to be obese. Mm-hmm. I mean, first of all, the our favorite was when she went homeless. Oh, yeah. For what, like 60 minutes? <laughs> yeah. Right. With like a camera a crew and food minutes, behind right, her. With a van. And, like, she could go homeless. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of booty going on these days. <laughs> it wouldn't kill her to not eat for, like, an hour. And <laughs> She did the fat suit, though. Yeah, that was... Fantastic to go homeless and then say you know what it's like. Mm-hmm. It's the most... Like, we always used to make fun of Geraldo Rivera once upon a day, you remember? Because he would inject himself into the story. Yeah. She's taken it one step further where there is no story but her, and the story doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's like she would go up on stage at Caroline's, not tell a joke, and then come back and cry and go, now I know what it's like with him. It's so hard. Like, you didn't do anything. <laughs> you didn't do We got the Black History Month <laughs> bathing suit clip. It's really quick. Yeah. February is Black History Month, and today I'm honoring Black History by celebrating an event that not only changed my life and the direction of my career, Don't drink coffee. but more importantly, it, it impacted the face of beauty for women of color everywhere. <laughs> this month marks the 10-year anniversary of my appearance on the cover. I think of we all remember where we were. Magazine swimsuit yeah. Edition. yeah. That isn't a joke, Phil. Bill looked like. Wait a minute. This is like that's an not right. That's not it, real. It sounds like an SNL skit. I have skit. a dream. <laughs> yeah, that goes that right down. <laughs> Malcolm X. I'm not a diner till you make me a diner. I understand. Tyra Banks. Because, I, I understand I've been because, on Sports because Illustrated. Because they only did have white girls on there, but there was enough other black women who've done things. She could have picked them, but of oh course my she god, well, it running, had to be her. They're yeah. running out of things you know black people have haven't done yet. That's all. I mean, come on. 
Who, how many times can you talk about George Washington Carver and that goddamn penis? Right. But, and, and then so for, it's time for Tyra. Here's a, this is really quick, too, and it wraps it up. And it meant so much to me because the moment the decision to put me on that cover was made, it was a decision to recognize and celebrate black beauty. And ultimately, <laughs> what that SI cover did was it enabled young women of color to realize that they can Be dream sluts. big. <laughs> Are it was you because of kidding me. me? The operative word was me. She said yeah. it meant so much to me. To me. When it happened, as you may recall, since it wasn't ancient history shrouded in the mists of time, <laughs> we're talking about ten years ago, not like when volcanoes were all over the earth and the sky was black and there were pterodactyls flying and plucking your baby from its nest. This isn't, you know, Medi, this isn't in a tapestry. This is on video. And uh, uh, it, it wasn't exactly a live changing moment it was another moment where you went oh great yeah Tyra yeah. Banks got on a thing that's cool did you there were black models before her yeah I don't want to break her pretty did you open. think for a second like oh my god and were there protests like why is there a black woman on the cover of our magazine like boycotting the magazine and she had to you know punch through that race barrier she's practically Jackie Robinson yeah. there's no question yeah. believe me the hardest core racist would still wind up cranking it to her. I know. It's on like, that, I don't yeah. care what race the girl is. If she's hot and she's, she's hot, hot. it flat. doesn't matter. It, it overlooks that salient fact about men. It really doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. can even have one eye. If they're hot, <laughs> right. it's on. Yeah. It's on. Exactly. It could be a cyclops oh, God. issue. God, we're on the same page because we had a lot of fun with that. Oh, oh she's yeah, the worst. I, I really, she's irreplaceable. Yep. We have a stack of CDs. It's all tire audio. Yeah. It's like if we're having kind of a lame show, we'll break out tire audio and have fun for an hour. All about her. It's you, Unbelievable. You thought Oprah was self-aggrandizing. But oh. Oprah actually, you know, occasionally does something. Yeah. Ira just says she's doing it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I yeah. want to change my act to be like hers. Greg Proof's always a pleasure. <laughs> he's at Caroline's all weekend long starting tonight. One show tonight at 8, and uh, he's playing through Sunday. He's got a show on Sunday at 8 as well, and, and any, everywhere in between. For reservations for Caroline's here in New York City, 212-757-4100. Thank you so much, Greg Proops. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Uh, Bill Bird's going to be... Is going to be at Caroline's next weekend. Next weekend. So there you go. If you're not joining us over at... I'll warm the stage up for you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to XM. Save some for me. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good day. See you later. Here we are over at XM. Bill Burr made the walk, obviously, and Greg Proops decided to continue with us, which is very good news for the Opie and Anthony show. Thank you. Uh, he's the voice of Bob the Builder, so we're kind of talking about that as you guys were listening to Ecstasy of Gold. And Bill Burr, like, has no idea about Bob the Builder, but um, anybody with a kid or that has been around kids for any length of time knows Bob the Builder. This will hippie to it. Can we build it? Yes, we can. Well done, Anthony. Well done, Opie. Oh, Thanks. Bill. Oh. You should recycle. <laughs> well, it started with someone on this. This sounds like Greg Proops to me. Pretty I, much. I, I got the same watch. voice as me. Well, I got to watch the show. Hold mm -hmm. on. Dan from Raleigh. Uh, You'll be bored after 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. It's for two-year-olds. Yeah, Dan from Raleigh started this. Does Greg's contract prohibit him from saying horrific things using the Bob the Builder voice? And we asked that off air, and Greg's like, it's my real voice. I didn't have to change it or anything for the yeah. Is that a rusty role. trombone? <laughs> <laughs> Golly, Wendy, you should play that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mark, put down that trombone. It's rusty. He's huge with the under five crowd. Like Dude, I'm big. I'm big. If you, if you can't walk yet, I'm all over you. And Bill asked, like, uh, <laughs> if, if you walk up to kids and try to freak them out, but uh, you had a good answer to that. Yeah, I'd have to wear a construction helmet and be three inches tall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For them to understand. The kids wouldn't get it. No, they'd go, why like, is he doing that? He's desecrating the thing I love. <laughs> See, that sucks because they knew the word desecrate. Yeah, because if <laughs> scaring children is one of the highlights of being an adult. Oh, it's a blast. It really is. Someone's going to get electrocuted eventually. That yeah, might I didn't like the sound of it. I, think, uh, I was just going to say, there was a yeah, kind of a people Tesla People touch it all the time. <laughs> a, little, a little hum. <laughs> One of these days, you're going to go up in flames. But Wizard. Wizard. Know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's the mechanics, man. <laughs> hey, Dumbledore, for whatever. <laughs> So he can't get the recognition for one of the hugest voices ever. Yeah, oh, there you go. And, and you know what? It's just as well. That's I don't have to do suck. public appearances because I'd have to wear a helmet and whatnot. And oh, that and would be. And I couldn't yeah. fix anything, to be honest. Yeah. So now you so can, you I any, can barely fix coffee. So, so do you get any like uh, like build. milf kind of groupie? 
action oh, yeah. going on after a voiceover. Oh, yeah, completely hot. Come out with your shirt open down to your navel, <laughs> just coming out like Tom Selleck of the voiceover world. <laughs> you've been there. You've been there for my recording session. I, I wear PVC <laughs> pants. <laughs> Totally live my shirt. I, in fact, I wear a mesh shirt, if you remember those. Oh, yeah. Tom Jones. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Like a total mesh shirt, and then uh, there's a no sweat Bob outside. the Builder voice. That was awesome, dude. And I'll go recycle this. Hey. Re- reuse <laughs> this. Yeah, the bad porno lines. It's great. I also noticed you sat down and you said, I love New York papers, because, you know, you're, you're from where? San Francisco? I, I'm from San Francisco, but I live in Los Angeles, and we have uh, we have a newspaper, I think. And uh, but we never we never have fantastic headlines uh, like campus life choke with pills study, yeah. <laughs> Which <laughs> I went to campus once upon a time and I never choked on pills. Yeah, I did. However, I didn't study either. But there was never a hyphen in between. <laughs> Last minute bell shocker. It's hard for us to call these newspapers. We, we which one am I reading? Oh, the news. Yeah, the massacre news. in village shootout. Uh, Hill smoking story. hot in D.C. That means Hillary. Yeah. 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 She's Hill to the Daily News. Hill. They just yeah, call yeah. her Daily Hill. News calls her Because it's too short. You, you couldn't write, she hates America every single time. <laughs> so you have to write Hill. <laughs> no, I, I do I do love the New York papers because uh, news is not necessary. No. Well, my no. joke is when you go to different countries, like if you go to England or Canada or whatever, they have things in the news that we don't have here, things like um, facts <laughs> and information. <laughs> here, news is based largely on how people feel about stuff. And that actually yeah. qualifies. We're in a Tyra-esque world here. <laughs> right. Because people will go... Like, whatever, on The View, they're always arguing. And Elizabeth Hasselbeck, who's oh, she, possibly the most uninformed human she's alive. She's probably the dumbest female out there. Yes. She's like a she represents of, the young uh, demos for that show, right, the young yeah, female demos. I pine for Debbie Matinopoulos. Oh, I mean, yeah. like, it's, a bag of hammers is smart. It's so her. uncomfortable how uninformed she is. And then she'll go, I just feel really passionate about it. Yeah. And you think, well, it's all well and good that you feel passionate, but you have no information in your position. Yeah, when she gets pushed into a corner and realizes that she's just getting killed, uh, as far as intelligence she goes, starts yeah, she starts crying. Trying right. to get out of it. Right. Which is That's her great. thing. She does it YouTube, at home. YouTube has videos of she her does. just crying. I think all I over do that. Yeah. She uses the. Uh, yeah, well, you ought to just start using that. She goes with yeah, the. You guys, you don't understand. The I'm second I you. start feeling like I'm being beat up on here, I'll be like, oh, hey, I'm going to do it on stage <laughs> this weekend. If it gets a little hectic on Saturday on St. Patty's Day, I'm just going to start just crying. crying. I just feel really strongly about telling jokes, and you guys <laughs> won't let me tell them anymore. Last week, what was it? It was the government spying, and Rosie went, like, it's bad that the government should spy on innocent people, and this was. No, it's not. It's good, you know. <laughs> and then she started crying. I know. I'm uh, not doing anything bad. Right. You can't back it up after two sentences. Mm. And I, I, I love her for that. So. I should have started crying when I didn't realize you can't light a log in a house that you would actually die. I never yeah, even that, thought about the... You uh, well, I mean, we, we learned that Brad Delp, uh, lead singer of Boston, he committed suicide. It comes out oh, today, yes. uh, thanks to the Boston Herald. And uh, I guess he dragged in some uh, some grills. Two some barbecue grills. Lit them up grill. in his no bathroom. No one's ever heard of carbon monoxide. Yeah. No, but that's, he did that's it on pretty purpose. That's kind of, yeah, But yeah. that's pretty creative is yeah, what yeah, we're getting at. Like, he decided, you have to really think that out and, and you know, drag him into like, your eyes, right, and I'll just uh, lay line them up bed and, and maybe make some burgers for the police, uh, you know, so they have something <laughs> to eat when they find me. I don't it's, know. It's but in my build. world, if he put logs in there, it would have been okay because I've seen them in the fireplace. <laughs> and I never really <laughs> the thought the about fireplace the fireplace. Well, you see, the fireplace has a flue that takes yeah. the, the air out. I, I, I it never dawned on me. I've never taken a science class Clearly. in my life. <laughs> it was the Bill Nye way of committing suicide. I'm yeah. going to create a monoxide situation where the molecules of that outnumber the oxygen and therefore my life will end. And it's a double whammy well, because not, not only is that. the log throwing off poison, but it's eating up the, all the oxygen in the room too. So You'd have to have a big log and dead. close the flue on your fire. Yeah, there you go. And you have to have a very tiny house because oxygen's going to get in there. Yeah. This stuff is stupid. <laughs> I just feel really strongly about it. Bill, <laughs> you I want to burn a barbecue in my bathroom. I should be able to. No, that's the guy version. That's the guy version of crying yeah, when you have no information. This guy's a fag. Yeah, right, right, right. Just, the big stupid out. dick. The guy version is then you just got to fight. Yeah. When you feel really <laughs> yeah, stupid. Punch and, yeah. someone. Someone is just killing you with their just intelligence. Like, all right, now we got to fight because I have nothing else yeah. left. Right. I have no more ideas, so I'm going <laughs> to punch you. I, I, have, I, punch you. Right. I have to beat your brain down to my level of intelligence. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> if, I, if I strike you hard enough, you'll be as smart yeah. as I am, and then we'll yeah. be on a level playing field here. <laughs> we got a call coming in that could be a little Make interesting. your points now, buddy. <laughs> David in North Carolina, what's up? <laughs> Hey, Opster. Hey, uh, first off, I want to tell you I love you guys, man. I love your show. It's the greatest thing I've ever heard. Uh-huh. 
But I got a bitch about you. Y'all starting to sound like a bunch of bedwetting liberals. Well, bedwetting. Bush did a toss. <laughs> Where, what can I tell you? Even I mean, Anthony. I'm the furthest thing from yeah. a liberal. Anthony is. It's I'm not, not a liberal. I, 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 I. You can't see. That's the thing. The second you say Bush is an awful president who's doing a shit job, you're a liberal. I'm fucking. Well, I'm. A, I'm a. I'm a Republican. I, I, well, I consider myself conservative leaning. This isn't this the way you can explain it yeah. simply. If like I criticize. The head coach of the Patriots. It doesn't mean I hate the Patriots. Uh, it means yeah. I don't like the direction that he's taking the team. You're a bedwetting Jets fan, is what yeah, it means. There you go. I love that. Yeah. If you're on the, le I'm on the left. Yeah. I don't. I don't wet the bed. Like automatically. You never wet the like bed. There's, there's, that's what there's all that thing do. that automatically, if you're on the <laughs> left, you're just you're automatically like a pussy. Or uh, yeah. if you're on the right, you're you're, you're fucking John Wayne. Right. You're uh, a gun treading psychopath. Your mattress is just full of big yellow stains. Oh yeah. You gotta keep flipping well, it over because you wet the bed every night. <laughs> yeah, you sound Bill like Burr, some I, Jesus freak conservative. Yeah, really. Uh, Bill Burr, I love you, man. I think you're great, but you're hopeless. <laughs> I'm why? trying to say the because I don't I'm share your opinion. Exactly. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I want to know why, Dave. Go ahead. Why? Give us an example. Well, you just any little whiny ass thing that comes. I mean, everybody sits there and complains on the show about. All the PR problems, and they want to ban this, and the women get all everything that they want is the liberal that they don't want is the liberal side. And he's not really answering the Bush question. Is an, Bush is an idiot, man. All right, I'm not saying that, but he got to except for the war. He just contradicted himself. <laughs> except for the war, what? Do you understand? I mean, Bush's the economy and everything. No, no, hold on, hold on. He's done a bad job. Bush has done an awful job because he's. He's completely fixated on the war. You remember other presidents, and I mean both Republicans and Democrats, there would always be footage of them on the news sitting at a table signing things, and you know, then they'd hand out the pens, or you'd see them with uh, uh, members of Congress, and they're actually working to help the country get a little better maybe. Uh, whether they did uh, accomplish that or not, they actually did something. I have not seen Bush do anything except stand up at whatever speech he's giving, and it doesn't matter how the speech starts. It could be fucking Cogswell Cogs companies <laughs> talking about fucking Cogs, and it'll turn but, into, we need it for the war, there for the f freedom, Cogs for freedom. It's like yeah, everything Anthony, he's done revolves right. around the war. I will give you that, Anthony. You're right. But you've got to realize this is a different kind of war that we've ever fought in our history. No. It's and pretty yeah. similar to Vietnam. Yeah. It really is. I don't want to sound well, like one of those, it's another Vietnam, it's not another Vietnam, but there are a lot of similarities. There's a way to deal with this type of war, and it's not being dealt with Plus, properly. he never answered the question, how I was hopeless. He's just, you're hopeless. Yeah, oh, Bill because hopeless. of this, that. You're, you're, you're just so far to love, Bill. Like I said, I love you, man, but you just got, I'm, I, I respect your views, your views, but you're just so far over there, I'm, I'm not going to bring you back over. I'm fucking, I'm, I'm pro-choice, but I'm fucking pro-gun. I love my fucking guns. I want I want whatever kind of gun I want. I want to be able to buy it. Uh, but I'm pro choice. So what does that fucking know, make yeah. me? How does that fucking thing? I want to shoot fucking fetuses. <laughs> That's how <laughs> fucked up I am. <laughs> I love you, yeah, man. Don't get me wrong. I love. I know you. You just you get you automatically get like pigeonholed. You like get I, I, my, my view on abortion. I wouldn't want to tell anybody what to do. But personally, I wouldn't do it. But and like porno, I think porno's bad for you. I'm kind of anti-porn in <laughs> a way. Yeah, I now? just I just feel like it's like I view your soul like it's like pixelated, <laughs> right? And anytime you watch, you ever watch something like you shouldn't have seen on the internet? You just feel a couple of cubes, a couple of pixels away, go away, and then you just kind of walk. Uh, uh, you're a little more evil. <laughs> that's so pretty I'm good. I don't think it's healthy to watch yet. But you know, but two gay guys want to get married. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I don't I care don't. about that. So either. it's like that doesn't bother yeah, I kinda uh, can... Ergo the bedwetting, Bill. Yeah, yeah. now you're wet in the bed. Uh, yeah, exactly. Huh? It's like I, I jump on How both sides. How dare you have a complete I'm all viewpoint. for blowing what's this Osama bin Laden? Blow a fucking blow those mountains up, nuke them. I don't give a shit. Whatever, about, right. Yeah, yeah. It's like you just get rid of them. If you have one opinion now, it's it that's to the left or to the right, then you, you'd like to, you, you're hopeless. I'm you know not hopeless. why? You know why? Because if you just described what you are and how you feel about things and and how I feel about a lot of things, 
it's it lies in the middle somewhere and no one really wants that because you got to fit into one of the categories or the other it's become like wrestling yeah you're either a heel uh, or you're the baby face uh, baby face you can't it? be in the middle you can't yeah. be a heel you're, baby yeah, face you're either dressed in black or you're wearing the white hat right depending on how somebody views it that asinine. makes it easier for everybody then they know what you oh, are you, and they know you if they could like you or hate wrong, you man. huh <laughs> I, I, no I think we hit you me. right on the head <laughs> yeah. yeah no I told you at the beginning I respect everybody's opinion I think Dude, you called me hopeless made out of well you are you're 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 way over there Phil See, he's You're not even hearing, he's website. not even hearing me. I just said I was anti-abortion yeah, and porno, so I'm not way over there. Well, you're just about over. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Like, you, you can't. Hold just, on, forget it. David, forget at this point, you better just start crying because uh, yeah, just cry. I think you're hopeless. <laughs> or challenge Bill to a fight. That's your two options at this point. You are acting like a gay retard, and I'm very passionate about that. All right, David. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Y'all rock on, man. All right. Hi, Dave. Hey, uh, you heard about the old lady getting mugged? No, what old lady? It didn't make San Francisco or L.A., the 101-year-old lady that got uh, mugged? Listen, I'm for that, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. yeah. They, they all have too. a lot of money, and they're mm -hmm. not, not, they can't defend themselves. They're easy pickings, I call them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, was I supposed to come down on the other side of that? Yeah. <laughs> was that bad? Yeah. I hate when old people get it's mugged. It's going to ruin your image. Yeah, yeah. This, uh, this, uh, this, this mugger hit her, what, three or four times? Three or four times. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I saw it in the paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, bloody awful, of course. 101 years old, knocked her little wool cap off her head, and then, oh. and then she's still standing with her walker. She, at one point, for some reason, reached over to grab her purse back reason, from the guy. For some reason, she doesn't know any better. And the guy just gave her this overhand right, pan to the side of her head, and laid her out. Knocked her right out. The old granny had a glass. Gotta admit, jaw. that guy is gonna survive in prison. You think? Nah. I think he is. If you could, if you could do that, you can pretty much do anything. Especially if his cellmate's over a hundred. He's got a real yeah. oh, shot. Wait a minute. <laughs> it, it took, took him four, four shots, shots to four knock shots. the old broad I'm, down. I'm, I'm, I was talking about the heartless. Just ice he yeah, has in yeah. the middle of his chest that he could just. You but know. he's gonna get no respect. Four shots to knock that old broad down. Come on. <laughs> you know, I didn't even look at it that way. <laughs> well, we were. Mr. Magoo is going to be yeah. raping him in prison. Yeah. Yesterday, we were reading a, a column by Bill Gallo, and he's like, he wants to take on the punk, even though he's right. in his 80s. Bill Gallo's like, yeah, 80s. He's like, oh, like, oh you're picking out old women. Why don't you pick on me, buster? Right. Ugh. Writes a whole column about it. And, and using I, language like, you know, I why don't you have a little moxie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, oh, God. You're and then I are calling so out old. the guy, we're like, God, I yeah. just wish the mugger would take Bill Gallo up on this little challenge. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think you are, Jack Dempsey? Yeah, huh? I'll come you, on. I'll show you a left hook. I did some boxing back in the day. He was That's right. I, those guys. I scrapped. I did a yeah. little fucking uh, fist the cuffs. <laughs> he has like an anchor <laughs> tattoo on his forearm. Yeah, right, right. Right. That's faded. The Marcus of Queensberry taught me a few right. throws. <laughs> Marcus of Queensberry rules. <laughs> yeah, we'll put, duke it out. He puts his hands up like the Fighting Irish. Fighting logo. Irish guy. Right. Right. Put him up. Put him up. Yeah. Uh, I'll go bare knuckles with you, you punk. This guy just lays a pipe on the side of his head. Yeah. And the same thing, the letters to the editor. They all are, want to take on this yeah. guy, but they're using fake names and screen names as they write into the paper. Quite the, quite the pugilist in my day. <laughs> yes, Where are you? I'll give you a Sunday punch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll throw a haymaker. You won't know where you're haymaker. coming from. <laughs> yeah, the old dude was like really trying to get back at this guy. Uh, oh, that's stop. cute. Isn't it? Well, no, but you know, people always broad. prey on people, and it's just, it's bloody awful. What are you going to do? Human nature, man. Uh, yeah, they, they're, they're they really. They the old, as they say. They the really put out the word yeah, on that's this That's what they get now. for using it. Did they pick him up? Right no, the city. Nah, I haven't found him. The city's outraged, oh, and, oh, and the NYPD is under a, a bit a of pressure because he's still out there. Of course. Plus, it's exactly the kind of tabloid story that all the New York papers are going to keep going. They on love it because it, it was on video too. So oh, is it? The news was able to oh, show yeah. the surveillance oh, video. Oh goodness! They showed it. I must have seen it. I swear, eighty times. That's they just can't keep showing it because they uh, know people love watching that. Not shit. since the lady beat up her kid in the car have I enjoyed watching someone get video pummeled. like that. What do you think great. was in her purse? It was probably coupons, a couple cans of Alpo, gum, yeah, <laughs> tissues that she uses, dabs her nose and puts it back. Right. Some sugar packets from the fucking diner. Yeah. <laughs> a, a margarine, uh, a margarine plastic tub. Medication, yeah. lipstick from 1972. Yeah. Oh, honey, <laughs> poor yeah. thing. And that old chink. Jersey Perth. saving bond, <laughs> a gold double eagle. <laughs> Why do you go with the overhand? You got to go with the uppercut with the elderly. She was reaching down to grab the bag back, so he had a good shot at the side of her head with a little right. overhand. 
knocked oh, the wool cap off her so he head. He punched her in the back of the head. It wasn't even legal in boxing. Yeah, it was like did. down on the side, kind of back. It really. Uh, it, oh, oh! You, is Than punching it up? Oh, punching. Oh huh? uh, yeah, well, it's uh, it's oh, it's come on, fantastic. I gotta see it. Here you go. Yeah, you right. gotta take a look. Apparently, Bill and I have been living in a cave. Uh, pull it, yeah. TMZ. Here it is. Uh, as you see, she thinks the guy, the gentleman, is helping her with the door. She's walking out of it looks like a doorway or an elevator or something. This is making me feel so much better about myself. Yeah. What was it you were saying about watching videos you oughtn't watch and then a bit of your? Mind? Yeah, this is gonna be a few pixels yeah. gonna fly away on you, Bill. Uh, and now, see, he's going to help. And then, Ow! bam, just clocks her clocks three clocks. times There's right there. There's 101, by the way. Now he grabs her purse. Now he doesn't feel threatened, so he just kind of starts rifling through her shit right there. Let me see she leans, she starts, she going, he's going through her pockets. She, she then leans over like this, like, hey, give me that back. And, bam she's down. down goes the old, old lady. lady's down. Oh. The old lady's <laughs> down. Down goes Gladys. Down <laughs> goes Gladys. Stop the fight. And uh, he then he leaves on his pink bicycle. Yeah, that's a pink bicycle, by the way. He, uh, he stole from a little girl. And, and he went on to an 85-year-old. He was feeling got, good about himself. Admit, those those, were, hell those were jabs. Little jabs. Hooks. Yeah, little jabs he gave her at first. He was pulling his punches. In the end, he gave, you know, remember when Larry Holmes was, was measuring his punches? When he would yeah. do those overhand right. Little overhand yeah. right. <laughs> she looked like Cooney. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> She's got a glass jaw, the old broad. It was Bill, embarrassing. I think that was, even that get, was uh, Cooney's uh, great-grandmother. Bill Adam from Texas oh, wants to know awful. if you got a conspiracy theory as far as that video you just saw. Yes. Conspiracy. Uh, do I have, no, not on something like that. God, you're hopeless. You are that. a you're bedwetting, hopeless. hopeless case. You know, it's embarrassing she would even stand you don't uh, want old to walk with that up. guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I did, I, did a, I did a thing on this radio show I did about... Uh, he loves uh, conspiracy theories. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah. Like, but, I, but I even said on the show, like, I, I've always believed like 80%, it always makes sense the first... It's like, it's like a bad movie. You're like, you're totally with it, and then the third act is just no payoff. Right. Like, ah, big movie. Well, that's right. Flying yeah. saucer at the behest of the CIA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Bush is an alien, then you're like, oh, ah, right, I forgot fuck. about that. You know, then, yeah. then, then it's like over. Yeah. You know, I get a cousin who's got loads of books like that, and he showed me one. And, that, you know, you go, yeah, right. And then, like, page 48, then they brought the alien girl in to rape her. And, okay, uh, all right, okay. I'm kind of getting yeah. off the chain now. now. What, what's your little... favorite one? My favorite conspiracy theory? Oh, golly. I have so many that I love. Anytime aliens come in, I really <laughs> like it. Because that's the last redoubt of the scoundrel. Much like people who are psychopaths wrap themselves in the flag whenever right. they're going gets tough. You know, like, you disagree with me, therefore you hate what I love. Like, mm, no, no, I didn't say that. Uh -huh. Anytime an alien lands is the time that I love it. Like, first of all, I love Bigfoot, okay? I don't uh, know if that's a conspiracy theory. Oh, yeah. But I adore all mythical animals. And I hope that they all live together and there's a lounge with a Loch Ness monster and Bigfoot in the <laughs> Yeti are hanging around together, and Just I've come to realize people. there's an animal in uh, 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 Canada and, and near Vancouver called Ogopogo. Yeah, we heard about Ogopogo. Him. Uh, he's yep. the Loch Ness monster of this lake, uh, Okanagan. And I bought his doll, and the doll has f the the Ogopogo mythical doll creature has four lakes. There's one in Michigan. There's one in New York. Like, mm -hmm. well, how like the plane? There's so many of the monsters that they couldn't be bothered to r make a specific monster for this lake. So we've done one generic. Oh, they franchised it. Yes. And that's to me, nice. I think, yes, because if the monsters had it in their power, that's what they would do. They would be on the phone with yeah. each other and emailing and whatnot. And we yeah. Gotta, we got to get the merchandise organized here. The ancillary is killing me here. <laughs> I got. I have a purple yeah, I'm more, head. I'm more you have a blue head. And yeah, we got to go with the green thing here, so I can sell more. I'm not into like like myths, like like animals and that stuff. I just like uh, conspiracy. The whole, uh, you know, there's ten guys running the world. I mean, come on, man, that's like comic book that's shit. True, how, how, can, how can you? There are ten guys running that whole the world. thing. They meet in ridiculous. an office. It's right near here, in fact. Is yeah. it? Yeah. Do you remember in the X Files when they would meet in that room when everybody had green upholstery? And yeah, that was great. And they kind of hammered out what was going to happen. That was that I mean, yeah. Everybody knows the Illuminati Ooh. loves green upholstery. Yeah. Anytime yeah. you're in a room. And they smoke cigars. And they're all sort of middle aged to aged men. Now, who picked out the furniture? Is he part of the secret society or uh, there, or yeah. is it just somebody that they One killed the no, afterwards? You know, you, know, you know what I honestly believe? I don't believe that 10 people in the world. I, I think there's, there's probably 10 groups. Of people groups. like constantly yes, fucking with each men other. In each of those groups. Yeah, <laughs> constantly <laughs> fucking with each other. Yeah, trying, I say trying, we go with red upholstery. Trying to basically run everything, which you can never quite do. It's so just, there's it's a too kind big. of a battle going on. Is it a physical battle or just a battle of wits? Or like a ha ha, I'll get you next time. No, like going to war and that. Like I think like a lot of the stuff that 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 we're we're trying to do. You know, 
Mm -hmm. Just putting like bases everywhere we go. That's a way to like try to take over the world. I think that's that's fascinating to me. Take over the world. Don't you think if we wanted to kind of take over the world, we could do a better job of it? Well, we want especially without the Soviet Union there anymore. I think. No, I mean like having like like an empire, a way to get people like under your control. You just put bases everywhere. I still think we could do a better job of that. We're not look at like there's always room for improvement. What's your favorite conspiracy theory? I like uh, the moon landing. Oh, that it didn't happen? Yeah. That's true. It was in a stage in Tustin, California. <laughs> yeah. See, he knows. I love that theory. Well, you came up with... I can't... I got a quick, I, got, I have a good one. How come think? when people look oh, through yeah. a telescope, they never see the car or the shit we left up there? See, it's Yet, small. they can look at Pluto. Yeah, that's what got it's me thinking. Really small. good point, Bill, Bill came up with this about a week or two ago. <laughs> <laughs> You're the person who doesn't know that fire goes upward. I know. <laughs> that right. creates heat. <laughs> <laughs> that's why my show is called Uninformed. Uninformed. I, I have a license to be a complete ass. I love Bill's show. It's called Uninformed, and he'll talk about stuff like he absolutely, like it's fact. Yeah. Like it just came out of a fucking encyclopedia right. because he's got you a mic in front of him. See the car on the moon. No, it's more, <laughs> it's more. It's more. a shot for the cover of the post, though. Yeah. Why don't, can I ask you a question? Why, why don't they show that just to end that? Just, I mean, the scientists got to have satisfy you, you yeah. mean? There's no the telescope that could look at it, really. It's, they have... Would you shut up? It's, it's <laughs> Anthony, they can look at other fucking galaxies. Yeah, yeah but now, you can't, now you can't take tank. a picture of the fucking yeah, Ford Pro they left up there. You can see that scary face on Mars. <laughs> You don't even get it. We could see the scary face on Mars. Face First of all, Mars I don't like Mars how is huge. I, I, I talk about it like I know, and I'm ridiculous, but he's talking like he works at NASA. <laughs> we no, I just have have like the technology. The technology. He sounds like Captain Kirk. Someday we will have warp drive. We don't a lunar landing. It, 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 <laughs> what is it? Er, er, yeah. Like Earth-based telescopes. You're not going to see the fucking Look, dude, do you think I really planet. think that You're we fucking fooled it. the whole goddamn world? Uh, yes, I that, do. That we didn't land that. there? Do you re- what is I the fucking purpose? We, like I said, we have a, a What fucking would even di- be the You know purpose? there's a mirror on the moon that we point a laser at to get the d- distance from the Earth to the moon? Yes, you mentioned that last time. And they check it every time. so often and to yeah, make sure it's not coming to get us. Yeah, the moon might come and get us someday. Yeah. But there's evidence that we've been there. Yeah, but you can see that, though. That's why you have visors in your car. That runs on water, but they just won't let it out. Man, <laughs> that's a good one. Too. And tires that never wear down. Yep. They won't yeah. let us have it. Nope. Oh, why wouldn't you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe that they can they can make a uh, they can make an engine that Bill. could get better gas mileage, but it's not cost effective. I mean, come on. These high now you're Mr. Science. No, I, you know what I'm basing it on? The fact that, that you these, have no these, information? No. There's a microphone just let me, in front let me, of let, you. Let, <laughs> let me finish before you destroy oh, my I opinion. Know. I want right? to show your opinion. I There's respect like, your shut opinion, up, Greg. Real. Shut up. Oh, boy. There's like hybrid cars, oh, love, right? Get like, like 35, 40 miles a gallon, yes. right? They do. Do you remember like the, right after that OPEC bullshit in the 70s? Japanese cars were getting roughly 30, 35 miles a gallon. It's fucking 30 years later. Yeah. That's the best you can do. I'm just saying that that is all a game. That's not a conspiracy. That's just like oh, a clearly. game. I was just saying a car that ran on water, which would be a steam-powered car. Of course there's yeah. better ways to run things. Yeah. If everything gets, if you get so solar panels on your house, it makes your meters run backwards because there's so much energy coming into your house, it goes right back into the grid. And that's not like a far-fetched theory of the future. No one wants a car that runs on less fuel and, and is, is 50 miles per gallon because... It's. It doesn't look cool. It's not fun to drive. It's not fast. People, especially what Americans. What are you basing that on? Uh, America, Americans. We like our fucking muscle cars. Well, go, we go, like. Go see that that uh, that who killed the electric car, and they actually have an electric car going up against a high performance car, and it, it holds its own. Really? Yeah. Well, that's it wonderful. How many of these fucking yeah. electric cars are there? One when those. I went to the dealership, I didn't see one. Why do you think that is? Did it look good? Why do you Possibly think that is? Was it just full of batteries? Did the guy have batteries strapped to his head? that you don't see why that is. It's the funniest thing ever. Why? You know what? Because you know, people you're, you're love right. internal. Right. America has oh, been in love. Back, you're absolutely right. America has been in love yes. with the internal combustion engine since it fucking came out. We love fast. We Hilarious. love fast. We love sleek. Like they had a choice. We love status symbols. We love things. Why do you fucking think? Don't get upset. People no. buy I, I nice can't cars. Spewing out shit that I can just see on the TV. Why there's do you not think an original there's thought still coming out of his mouth right now? There's nothing on original. the road. The flag is red, like white, and blue. I'm not about saying about the flag. I'm talking about American people. I'm not saying we're great because of this. I could say we're fucking stupid because of this. But the nature of Americans are. 
Bigger is better, can faster I, can is I better, tell you something? sleek fucking. You want a car that girls are going to look at when you drive by in it? Do you think that guys the average are gonna woman envy? is just sitting there going, I love this engine? Nobody gives a fuck. No, it's not the women. That's the guy's thing. American men, girls will look at the fucking nice car because they know the guy now has money. Bill, comment. It's, it's all fucking. I'm just saying. You think when, Ed Dead Bagley when, Jr. When, on his fucking only, bicycle is getting When there's only chips? one option, I mean, what else are you going to love? That's like but why there is there that option? What if there was just one ugly chick on the planet? You'd want to bang her every day. Why do you think there's that one option? <laughs> uh -oh. Why do you think there's that one option? Because you know what? a I'm big conspiracy. Wiser. We're, we're, not, we're not not a not a conspiracy, but just big business. That's all. That's big all I'm business. saying. That's all I'm saying. It's supply and demand. The, big the, business. The, the demand is <laughs> the demand. Come. What is it? Is uh, an attractive car like the Edsel. <laughs> <laughs> what are these cars? <laughs> Let me tell you, I used to own a Tucker, and I still have it. Gelman drives it. It's wonderful. The Tucker was a great car, Gelman. My thing, now this is my completely uninformed opinion. If you just make like electric cars and that kind of thing, we use less oil. Those fucking guys over the Middle East, they go out of business. They can't give money to terrorists. You solve it without shooting a fucking one bullet. It's, but then how are we Put gonna, them out of how are we going to drive fast and look cool? So it's all about you and the wind in your hair? Yeah. <laughs> it really is. All right, listen, we're going to solve one thing today. we got a guy that uh, works for NASA, uh, Mark in Houston. Mark, what's up? How you doing, sir? You Hi. actually work for NASA and you listen to this radio show, huh? Sweep the floor. Yeah, I think I'm the only guy that works at NASA that listens to you guys. It's pretty funny. Um, I no, wanted to comment on your, on your conspiracy theory why you can't see the, the rover on the moon. It's because it's covered under about 40 feet of dust. It's been up there so long. It's and not. eventually that mirror, the mirror is going to be covered under dust, too, and they're going to have to replace it. What, uh, this guy right now, this guy right now wait, wait, wait. is sitting at a NASA with a 45 millimeter to his head. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. What's, what's, sir, what's <laughs> blowing the dust the around? Dust there? Is, there is no fucking dust covering the, the, the lunar module the platform way? or the... Fucking flag or the buggy or anything else they put up the there. The wind is just blowing the dust around up there. No, yeah, all that wind up there. Right. It's what's really dusty and rocky up there? Yeah, and what's it's moving? Dusty. What's moving the dust? What could sir? possibly be moving the dust. The aliens. What do you do at no. NASA? <laughs> you sweep yeah, the, up after yeah, the scientists them. throw their halls wrappers on the <laughs> ground. Buy, uh, are, you, are you actually? You ever buy M and M's from the machine and you got to press N three? Yeah, I'm the guy who programs that. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Sometimes Dude, it gets caught I on the wire, happened. and people rock the machine. It's dangerous because the machine could fall on you because it weighs a lot. What happened was. Uh, Jawas have stolen the rover. Yeah, that's <laughs> what happened. This guy works <laughs> in, in Nassau <laughs> County. <laughs> that's the difference. He said NASA. He means Nassau. All right, and he gives us a protest. Uh, I don't think that would happen. Oh, and someone's saying meteor strikes. Uh, I don't uh, think enough meteor strikes are happening. That dust is covering a 60 feet deep. All right, let's go to Matt in D.C. You Matt, know what? I have up? no idea. Matt. Moon quakes. <laughs> We're getting a lot of informed. Well, that could be. Could be a moon sure. quake. Well, Matt. you know, the moon being made of cheese, yeah. a lot of times That's it'll true. melt when it gets too close to the sun, and then the rover gets covered. Finally, yeah, I some found scientific right. information you now. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. You're uh, welcome. Matt and I'll be here all the rest of the you. hour. <laughs> We're Matt in Carolina this weekend. <laughs> hey, uh, Matt. Matt. Yeah. Matt, you're yeah. on the air. Oh, Matt in D.C. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, uh, Ann, have you heard of the Tesla? Uh, what? Have you heard of the Tesla from teslamotors.com? No. It's a, uh, a high-performance, uh, fully electric car. It gets 236 miles uh, per charge, and you can plug it in anywhere. Yeah, Bill's got one of those. Plug it in. And what is this supposed to do? Yeah, the it's whole plug-in off these zero emissions, weird. and uh, the price tag's a bit... Emissions. Uh, Where's the power the come from? Where's the power come from? Uh, it's, it's a specially designed uh, power plant, a battery source. Obviously. Uh, no, no. I mean, I mean, when you plug it in, the electricity doesn't just come from your house. It comes from a I, yeah, power plant. Actually, actually, it does. But then where does your house get the power? I, See, I I'm trying to get to the end. House. I'm getting to the end game here, which is they're burning something to make energy in the world. So electric right, I, cars are kind of mythical as far as uh, there's a myth there that they are emissionless. You're still right, using. Right. You, know what it is about, you know what? You're making a great point there, but but your thing is just every, like your opinion is just everything is hopeless. Like it's yeah, fun. I love just, living like that. Just <laughs> ride it out. 
And just any anything to try to make stuff better is like we ridiculous. Will, no, we, it's stupid. It's not going to work. Like I must have brought up, I don't know, say what, maybe like twenty five different things, and every time it's completely asinine that you would want to do anything necessity anything to My try friend, to make anything any better. I'll give you one word: necessity. We I'll give you we two as words, human, jackass. We as human beings, oh, look at oh, history. Oh, oh, I don't. I don't mind. Oh, oh. I love Bill. Human beings through Calls history my radio show. Yeah, I know. don't Great. do anything until we need to, until there's a necessity to do something. Then we come to the table and do it. Right now, there isn't a necessity to come up with uh, better fuel. There isn't. It looks like it, and it looks like in the near future there Hilarious. will be. But right now, there's still huge vehicles out there where you can pull up to a gas pump. People aren't rioting because of the prices yet. People are freaking out, but not like – there's no riots. There's no fucking – until we go up to a gas pump and go, click, click, we're out of gas, people. Then you'll see human – in uh, the, the uh, way we, we invent things when we need this, the ingenuity we have, that'll come to the surface. But until we need shit, we're lazy. Fucking humans are lazy. We don't care. There's still fucking gas coming out of those pumps. I want a fucking Mustang that does 150 miles an hour. <laughs> Let me jump in real fast. Kyle from Jersey. You guys are trying to be smart on your show, yet the pad data can't even spell conspiracies right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is classic. <laughs> oh, Danny. Yeah, with, uh, bravo. With the XM, it, it Look, it spelling's overrated. Thing. It yeah, really I mean, is. Oh, God. That's just getting specific and careful That's on That's really me. funny. I don't need that. That's just insulting me. Jason in, in Indiana. What's up, Jason? <laughs> Hi, guys. I just wanted to call Bill a fucking idiot, but Anthony pretty well cleared it up for me about the where's the power come from thing. Yeah. So, I don't. Anyway. I'm not so hopeless, Bill, yeah. as I am. I know that humans... Uh, can um, adapt and come up with things when they need to. A and that's why we've been around and so long. we don't long. need to yet, is what you're saying. We don't need to yet. Some people say the global warming thing is, oh my God, it's going to be awful. This is going to happen. This Right now, in the today, I go outside. Uh, I gonna, I'd like it to be a little warmer. I out. think if everything was underwater, it would make everything a little more interesting. A little more interesting? Yeah, it'd be like, like that movie with everybody. Kevin Costner. Yeah. Yeah. Water world, world yeah. would be a great way to live, wouldn't it? Yeah. I it would like be that. different than They still had our... cigarettes in the water world, which I thought was an <laughs> yeah, interesting fact in that movie. The bad guys had a smoke. How do you make yeah. the cigarettes? <laughs> Where did you grow it? Where did they get it? Right. Apparently, there was a lot left over. A little tobacco. Uh, you want to talk to this guy, Bill? Jason? Mm. Jason, why is Bill an idiot? Because <laughs> he's a cockeyed optimist who wants yeah. the world to be um, better. Yeah. He wets I'm, his I'm, bed. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what are your qualifications? Uh, I have none, and I've got nothing. So, you know what? I love this guy now. I have none. <laughs> Fine, that's nah, great. You know what? All right. All right. Why don't we take a that break? That was great. Uh, you guys should just agree to disagree, obviously. Well, you know, I think we're going to have to agree to disagree. Why don't you agree to I disagree? I want to see you leg wrestle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 I fucking tapped out ten minutes ago. Hey, oh. We got a lot of people here. Why today? Wow. Why is everyone here today? Because it's a beautiful day. Well, see, there's also men in uniform. Well, tomorrow we're doing a special girls. walkover, and we were going to try to like find a restaurant and like surprise everyone with breakfast, and it kind of fell through. So we're going to have food up here tomorrow for all the listeners that do the walkover. Ooh. When you say food, do you mean like the kashi that you're eating, or do you mean you like... like kashi? What's wrong with my kashi? I adore kashi. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, right. do you mean that, or do you mean like ham and Actually, eggs? it's going to be Italian food. Oh, okay. You got to dig that. down. Did you get the free tampons that were in the kashi? <laughs> 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 Fucking girls. Cereal eating motherfucker. <laughs> it's gonna be from Rivoli's Tom yeah. River. Yeah. So But why are Good all these stuff. people here today? Just they heard about the Kashi off? giveaway. The Kashi. <laughs> Free Kashi. Are those blown out? Estrogen flakes. <laughs> <laughs> now with now with pink ovaries. <laughs> Is that a marshmallow fallopian tube in your Kashi? Those are delicious. <laughs> Oh, the bill is giving me shit. This is wonderful. Uh Greg proofs at Caroline's all weekend long. You staying, you going, what are you doing? Uh I'll go in a minute. You're almost to, to 10. Well, we go I got to go pass out. We go to 11. Oh, you go to yeah. 11? I'm going to go before then. You should. You because should. I want Bill to hold this down the rest of the way. You know, I can't hold it down. I, I have absolutely no information. I just have hope. It, Bill does I, have I, hope. I like, but I, I like that Bill has hope. You I like that. hope person, and I like, I like that about Bill. You. I like that Bill, Bill has hope. Bill does have hope. Yeah, you like, every, my like, like every, every possible fucking idea. 
That's what the only thing right. I noticed. But any possible oh, idea back to, to try to try to make sure that's you know, that's you're, you're, you're you're right. You, you know something? Bill is opening my eyes to something. I am really a pessimistic you're, motherfucker. I hate that. Re- just believe it or not, you are doom and gloom all the time. I am doom and gloom. I like I like that's Bill. Funny, I, I, this whole I find thing. you peppy. I, I try to be peppy, yeah. but I consider myself once like a, while, a realist. You have to have a little after school special thought, Anthony. Yeah, but I'm more. I like. I consider myself Uh-oh, like a, we just a more lost of a Indiana. realist. Like I kind of <laughs> look at it, kind of the way I it think is. He's a queer. I base a lot of things on on the history of humans on this planet, and 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 not so much on on what I think the future will yeah, be think, like. Who we, as much who we as both I see kidding? The past. Who we both we both basically almost flunked out of high school. Yeah, I worked in warehousing. He used to I install air conditioners. Yeah, you're right. And we're talking about how to solve Two the idiots. problems. You just knew school was you know bullshit. Yeah, I was so yeah, far that's above it. Yeah, man. They weren't teaching me anything. Please, do you, do you <laughs> use half the shit you learned in high school before you Look, the president went down. to Harvard and Yale, so there, there I think the go. whole education That's thing sad. can get a little overrated. So <laughs> Why don't you go it? lay in your bed and piss in it? I'm going to. Liberal. I, you know what I do? I wrap myself in, in my Hillary sheets, and I've got my Obama <laughs> Underwear, George, under ruse with the footies on them. Hey, you didn't and answer the question. We all over myself. We started with this: a black president or a female president? Mm. Does it happen at all? And, and if it does, Republican. Does it I don't think anything can happen. That's where my hope comes in. Ah. Right? When people say to me, "There'll never be a black president," and "There'll never be a woman president," to me, it sounds like there'll never be a black quarterback in the NFL. Uh, you know, just recast it a few years, mm. whatever, you, whatever, however you want to look at it. But this there'll time never around. be a woman who could drive or write a book. Right. But this time around, you think it's a good idea. Yes, thing. because I think there's been a cataclysmic change. I think after Katrina and after the last few years, look, we do comedy all the time, and you're in rooms all over the country. I'm including you in this, Bill. Oh, thank come, you. Come back. Okay. Come back, Bill. Hope Bill just likes his hope. I know. I love He's his happy. hope. No, but I'm actually pessimistic about. about what you guys are talking about. Sorry, right I don't think it matters who, who you put in the White House. They all kind of work oh, for the same I people. Oh, I see. So the minute yeah. I have hope written in my heart. The Illuminati. <laughs> the Illuminati. You know you, you literally, in. Yeah, you're you're squashing his I know. I, I, yeah, I killed it. I killed it. Yeah, yeah I know. You did. I did. You, you pissed on my, my dream. On this dream and hope. I've you been did. hanging out with Anthony too. Well, you know why? It's you because think, the ten people who rule the world will not let the president. Do I the dig president Bill's wants. Illuminati stuff though. That's I that I want to yeah. grab onto. Yeah. You think it doesn't matter who's in there? The system's in place, and that's it, right? Mm-hmm. I think you. If they always. I've, what, from what I've read, they say if if you get into office, you're lucky. If one Wait a minute, thing from what you've if, read if, at the if warehouse, you, if, if you can get like one thing, in, yeah, no, that I read in the back of a DC comic book. <laughs> that if 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 you can get one thing done, you've had you've had an unbelievable success. Well, what if his is successful? eradication of all <laughs> white people? It's ridiculous. Those guys wait, just wait, wait. plowed through everything. They, he's Dude, one of the most successful Halliburton's presidents moving to ever. Dubai, man, that's wait, all you need to know. Before we go to break, Greg Proops will appreciate this. He's playing Caroline's all weekend long. But uh, Ant's theory about how like um, with the president and and what they show you after you get into office. Oh, but that's Bill Hicks, actually. Yeah, yeah. Was it Bill? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. They show you a different view of the Zapruder film. Yeah, on a different angle. Yeah, we Any just questions? went. We just like went on and on about it, like yeah, you know, go into the base. Like there's and actual like, video. Well, that's it's not even film. Was, it's too. just twenty different angles of it, and yeah, yeah. yeah he, he's that joke brilliant. is from '93. That was Bill. Yep. I'm a huge and, Bill Hicks fan. '92, and he says uh, the first thing we're doing is going to go get Iraq. And that <laughs> joke's from seven, wow. 15 years ago. Yeah. Any questions? <laughs> Any <laughs> questions? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, uh, you think oh, you're it's going to be better, Bill? Don't worry. <laughs> Look, in, in a way, uh, uh, black so we or go woman or whatever, any change is good change at this point because we, it isn't working this way. Yeah, so we, we need a little swing over and one this way. This is but the thing about America, whether you're liberal or, you know, all those labels are so bullshit. Having been all over the country, and I play rednecky places where people go, God, do you tell your political jokes? You're a big fag from San Francisco. Don't they kill you with sticks? No, they don't. They fucking laugh because they understand I'm a comedian and people's opinions change. And there is no blue or red. There's people who live in different places and believe different shit. And like, you, you believe in guns? I believe in guns. I think it's part of the, you know, there's no getting back from it. Yeah. So does that make me a big fucking redneck? No. But I also believe in fag liberal shit, too. So, what the, you know. <laughs> but I think any change at this point is good change. And uh, whether it's Hillary or Barack Obama or whatever. And I also think it's exciting, the whole slate of people who are running. For instance, you've got Brownback from Kansas running, and possibly Hagel from Nebraska, who are screaming right-wingers who are violently opposed to this war. So explain that to me. Does that make them big fags? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. And was I reading Thank you. That? Thank you for explaining it. It was very cogent was and, and concise. Yes. I just wanted to give a one-word yes. answer. Was yes. I reading that Dick Cheney is thinking about running? 
that. Or was that just... I'm not certain what he's thinking of running for. Or was I dreaming that? Was it the deep vein thrombosis or the fifth bypass? (laughs) I I would advise him not strenuously walking upstairs. (laughs) At this point, he can't walk up a flight The guy took 65 hours on a plane, got the the deep vein thrombosis, and then... (laughs) You know, he's like like a cartoon character. (laughs) 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 He's Darth Vader without the mask on. Exactly. (laughs) Mr. Burns, and they crack his thing. Oh, not that vid. That vid always breaks. That's what genie is. Oh, that ventricle. That ventricle's always clogged. Let me just reach in here and ah, ah, pulls out a roast beef and throws it on the floor. It is pretty crazy. Embryonic lamb. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have a heart. That dude, There's something going on in that. He head. really, really <laughs> unhealthy. Thank you. He tried to run once in like '94, and he got. You know what he hated? Meeting people and talking. <laughs> yeah. He hated. He hated well, having to shake hands. Kind of part with of people. the job, right? The, the part of being president that's the biggest part, being a whore, yeah. because you have to like everyone and say hi to everyone, no matter what. Why can't on. you just go on some? Kind of like pal talk, like video conferencing. Yeah. You can sit there and just Friendster. run the presidency over yeah. there. Friendster. He, he, he could have a MySpace page. <laughs> but he's just truly, he's truly one, one of the Chinese. most intimidating people. Like that guy, like in, this is like scary. Yeah. You just yeah. Look at this, yeah. Like he, I like how he he views like common people like as a nuisance. Yes. I just yes. love. Nah. He used the word I love hogwash that vibe. a month ago. That's they, hogwash. Remember that one? They asked him about Iraq and he went, hogwash. I was like, when does balderdash and poppycock <laughs> oh, come back? Gosh. No one's even said hogwash in 50 years as a politician. What are you, <laughs> Taft? <laughs> <laughs> he really does. Uh, Every, everybody uh, that doesn't agree with him is a nuisance. He keeps saying that the newspaper's losing the war. That You know, whomever he can find. It's like, it's fantastic. I just picture him putting Bush in like a headlock. Just for the fuck oh, of yeah. it. Giving him a noogie. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, he drinks scalding hot coffee, too. I found yeah. out from a lobbyist who used to be an aide to him that he would go get him coffee when they do, like, the opinion shows. And he'd go, not hot enough. And they'd have to super nuke it, nuke it. yeah, in the microwave. <laughs> and then he'd slug it down. Wow. Four bypasses, and he's slugging down hot coffee. Hot Something you shouldn't do if you're healthy. Fucking coffee. <laughs> Yeah. He Holy goes beyond shit. scary, and you come back around. You have to something about that guy. He's just like he's a. I don't know. You've got to fucking love him on some fucked up level. <laughs> on some fucked up <laughs> level, some I hope guess. Inside you, Bill. Right. Yeah. See, Bill's always the like glimmer of hope. calls him the bull walrus because you can't move him once he's sitting, <laughs> and if he's reading a book or watching a thing, you can't get his attention. So yeah, like I, a bull walrus in the sun. I know? read a thing is is his group of people were trying to gain power in Washington. The CIA, the nickname for their group was he was known as the Crazies. Yeah, that's the CIA. <laughs> yeah, 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 that was their nickname. Yeah, for the the CIA calls you the Crazies. Amazing. <laughs> no, he's amazing. Maybe there's they some were. issues. All right, let's get great proops out of here. Bye, go, you guys. Thanks go, a lot, fellas. Great, go see thanks, Caroline's this weekend here in New York City. Cheers. All yeah. right, quick. Thank you, Greg. Hi, What's up, Greg? Greg? Good to see you again. How great proops in studio as well. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Fantabulous. Greg and I, every uh, comics in town this week at, at Carnegie Hall or at Town Hall. So Greg and I, Greg's at comics and I'm at Gotham, and we're going to try to get our audiences to go to each of our shows. To go we're going to have a shuttle bus. It's oh. a little minivan. It holds about five people. Uh, so <laughs> it should have plenty of room for anyone who wants to come down. What are you going to do with the empty seats, Rich? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a puppet show together a little bit later. We want to congratulate everyone who's been invited to play at the New York Comedy Festival because uh, we're playing the outline Fringe Comedy Festival, which we're conducting on our own. I'll be in comics in the Meatpacking District, which is a hotbed of comedy, as you know. And so will Norton, but he won't be at a club. Yeah, exactly. Make friends. Every club I do on the road is always the other club. It's never the the club. club. You're playing Skinkies? How come you're not playing Magnificence? It's always the other club. (laughs) Oh, that's down by the river. Don't nobody go down there. And sometimes I look in the paper to see who's at the other club, and I'm thanking God it's a Def Jam comic. Oh yeah, yeah. So at least I don't have to worry about. Don't have to you know, worry about the crowd going over there uh, and living. <laughs> you know, like uh, New Year's Eve, we're at Mohegan Sun, and in the three hundred seat room or whatever. Oh, and, okay. and they and and they uh, put Chelsea Handler in the arena. She's already sold eight thousand tickets. Wow, New Year's eight thousand. Oh, Wait, this not eight. Oh, she's doing more than one Two show. shows. Thank you very Chelsea much. Chelsea is a fucking... I'm doing her show next Thursday, actually. Oh, so I, 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 I just got to say awesome. something. Again, Stevie is annoying the shit what, out of me. What, he what, walks in here what, like a chopper just landed, and he's getting into it. It's radio. Why do you duck down 
to give people their stuff in the console. <laughs> exactly. Don't you like radar? I think you should take a lesson from Vic Morrow and jump up. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you hate Stevie so much? I can't he stand Stevie. He obviously has Stevie. problems. I, I know. hate Stevie. <laughs> Thank you, Stevie. Thank I you don't for know why, we, why would you why would you why were you ducking? I'm trying not to be a visual distraction. You're You're everywhere a visual you go. distraction by ducking down. <laughs> Look, this gentleman walks in. He's got some food. He walks in quietly, puts it down. And then leaves. You're ducked you. down like fucking, uh, you're in Da Nang. What are you doing? You got a sweet and low? Yeah. Oh, I put it you need low. a sweet and low, Rich? Stevie, yeah. thank you, and that'll be all. Oh. Yes, exactly. <laughs> get get out of here now. All right. Before it gets how ugly. Can, how can you not do an hour on Stevie? We, we've oh, done we've 800 done hours on Stevie. Entire shows now, on you're that. not paying that young man? Hard no. no, he's an intern. No, Last man, week his mom... Well, then he deserves it. Yeah, Last week his mom time. came in. She's been divorced for a while, and we had Troy dance very, very dirty uh, to Stevie's mom in front of Stevie. It yeah, good. Really? And, and, and by the end of the show, she was kind of into it. She kind of wants some young. Oh women. yeah, yeah. By yeah. the end of the show. Yeah, she wasn't yeah. sure what was so going on in the first great group. Little so I'm being bit. honest with yeah, you. But by the end of the show, of... she was looking at that young dick and going, "You know what? It's been a long time." Hey, who among us, right? <laughs> hasn't yeah. succumbed. It was. It took an you entire wore me show. Down. I wasn't queer when the evening started, <laughs> right. but all right. We wore. We wore her down. And then she either walked out of here very happy with a giant dildo. So. It was more of a Stockholm Syndrome thing than it was her actually Stockholm. enjoying her time here. <laughs> right, <laughs> she, right. she just gave she in. She began to relate to you. Yes. It My was... captors, there's so much like me. <laughs> yes. They have no moral compass. Uh, she left with Isn't a that what Patty Hearst, uh, they said happened to her, even though she did go to jail? Yeah. yeah didn't they, right. Wasn't that her claim that it was Stockholm? Yeah, but that's, I mean, she took it a little far. She bloody did go to jail. Yeah, yeah, she, she went did. to jail. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, With she her, did. The her, world's her, worst defense lawyer. Her little beret and her machine gun. Yeah. Oh, standing yeah. there robbing a bank. Hey, you know who he had in yesterday? You probably know him. Uh, Chris Morris. What a genius. He's man. a fucking You know Chris fun, Morris? From, Greg works England a lot. Um, oh, okay. So he, he had a show called Brass Eye there that was the most devastatingly hilarious We watched the clip yeah. the, ever in the history of British comedy. Yeah, we were watching part of the pedo uh, show he did. The pedo one is tremendous. I, the, the good AIDS and the bad AIDS. I mean, so many jokes. <laughs> he he fooled so many AIDS. politicians when he did the cake episode when he said, it's a drug called cake. Or he never said it was a drug. It's called cake and kids take it. And he never called it anything but cake. And then he went to all these different members of parliament and all sorts of people. What do you think of cake? And they're like, I'm against it and whatnot. And literally, show up his cake it was a, just wow. like the pedophile one it was a fucking hour that was just uh, uh, yeah like, he's a funny guy man. totally admire him and you know peter cook from cook and more right who is oh, also no. a genius oh well oh yeah they yeah. used to do radio together before peter cook yeah died. he was dudley moore's dudley uh, moore's partner partner yeah oh okay peter he, cook has the funniest joke in the history of mankind they're talking about on one of the albums uh uh derrick and clive Talking, about, they're just completely drunk, and they improvise these albums, uh, and they're hilarious for your listeners. <laughs> Derek and Clive live, and Derek and Clive ad nauseum, and he goes, uh, they're talking about what gives them a hard on, right? The horn in England. Uh, uh, the Bible doesn't have to give me the horn. <laughs> Peter Cook says, I wrote the Council of Churches. I said, dear cunts in charge of religion, your guidebook or whatever the fuck you call it doesn't have to give me the horn. And that, I always thought that was next to Woody Allen's, my grandmother was busy being raped by Cossacks. <laughs> Did he say that? <laughs> fucking hilarious. But Morris is one of the few guys Cook would riff with, you know. Like, he's just tremendous. Yeah, he was a very funny. He's, he's got he's a, a film out. called Four Lions it's gonna, about, uh, it's it's gonna it's do about well. bungling suicide bombers. Yeah. Oh, of course. It, it has to be some scabbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. never takes an easy, t you know, he'd never right. do a sitcom about a, you know, a mom who just got remarried. Right. He's yeah. always yeah. fucking the most scathing scabbers. No romantic comedies That's going great. on there. No, 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 it no. really is great. Hey, what's <laughs> what's the uh, show from England where the guy used to be a radio announcer and then he opened Alan up like Partridge. a bed, bed and breakfast or something? Oh. Alan Partridge. I'm Alan Partridge. Coogan. We interviewed him, Holy Steve Coogan. Yeah. Is that funny? He, dude, he's fucking one of the funniest guys alive. But he, he had different, it was diff the first one was, I think, I'm Alan Partridge, where he played a, a radio, a TV host. Uh, I was saying you, saying me, or something like that, and then it got canceled. Knowing me, knowing you. Uh -huh. uh, right, knowing me, knowing you, uh -huh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then it gets canceled, so then he does radio, and there's like three different jobs he has, one each season. I've only seen the radio uh, and the TV one. It's fucking... It's yeah. so but he does a laugh track in it, which you think you would hate. Cause it's like a one act, one camera shoot, like Curb or whatever, with with, with uh, a laugh track, which would normally make mm. me nauseous. But it works for some <laughs> reason in this show. I don't know why it works, but it does. He was in a group with Morris, and they did a show called The Day to Day. That was a news parody show, and Coogan was the sportscaster, and Morris was the anchor. And uh, Patrick Marber, who wrote Closer, 
Mm. You know that movie okay. that had Natalie Portman in it? It's a play. He's a playwright. He was in the group, too, and uh, I forget who the woman was, Jim McKeegan or somebody, but they were a mad, you know, a lot of talent in this one comedy show. And they did yeah, that. No so they, Chris Morris would be the stentorian anchor. Good evening and welcome to the dirt. You know, and then the stories would be fucking hilarious. Like a train breaks down in England and it turns into like Lord of the Flies and they're eating each other <laughs> after like an hour, you know. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Uh, we didn't know much about him when he came in here yesterday. I knew he, he was in a pretty big name. In the, so many funny guys in, in England we right. don't know yeah. here. Yeah. Like, Lee so, Evans, people don't even know here, yeah. and he's fucking sells out. He There's does like Wembley. Two guys, people know here. They know Russell Brand, and they know Eddie Izzard. Wembley. Yeah. I, th I, th I think Jimmy <laughs> and Carr. Jimmy Gervais. Jimmy yeah, Carr so. is a very Jimmy funny Jimmy Carr dude. is funny. Oh, and Ricky. Gervais is huge now. Of course, yeah. Ricky Gervais. I forgot him, but there's no like I'm in a gr the the group I play with in England. The comedy store players. Paul Merton's in the group. Paul Merton's enormous in England. Like he would be like Seinfeld, and here nobody knows. No his, one knows. You know, they don't yeah. even yeah. know his name. Yeah. Here. A lot of them don't want to come over because they make so much money there. Though, what's the point? Don't you know, bother. Yeah. Only like Russell, you know, wanted to be a movie star, I think, and you know, <laughs> yeah. and Eddie just wanted to crack it. He likes Americans, you know. He, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I never got over like there either. I've never made the, uh, I've never made the jump to, to England. I would like these to are the once. best comics, by the way. We're not talking about, you know, people always go, English TV must be so great. No, it's not. It's, it's Britain's <laughs> yeah, hottest fucking this. fireman and Britain's funniest dog and shit like that. You know, it's the same as it is here. <laughs> right. But yeah, there are, dog. at the same time, that they stinks. allow Chris Morris yeah. to work on TV sometimes. You yeah, know what the, I mean? So there's yeah. The shitty ones in England, we steal them and make them even easy. Easy, easy. Some. Yeah. <laughs> easy, uh, easy. That's my career. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait, wait, wait. You're talking about the TV oh. shows yeah. that are really Yeah, Steptoe huge. and right. Son, son mm. became Sanford and Son, and right. uh, Man About the House became All Absolutely. in the Family. Absolutely. Right. But right. I, I've always found, like, Maybe British humor, there's some brilliant, funny British guys, but I've always found, as a whole... The way people think, oh, American humor is so stupid, and British humor is so smart, that no. annoys me because it's not yeah, accurate. It's not true at all. Um, like, The Office was a, a work of art, but so is what Pryor did on stage. And, and I've never seen a British stand-up do what Pryor did on stage or what Carlin did. You know, so it's it kind of balances. That's where I, I agree with you, Jim. Yeah. People always say that to me about English stand-ups, and I say, the difference is we're, we've always been a little bit keener, I think, at stand-up. Because stand up is a real specific thing. Right. Maybe they're better at sketch or maybe sure. whatever, but like that's that's kind of a the, the idea that we don't have an idea of satire and irony and they do somehow and that they only yeah. possess that, that always kind of rankles me. Like they're very cheeky and it's like we get it. And I got they, it. They can be as base and vile as any, you know, comics and so can the audiences. Mm -hmm. They've but, conquered the planet. Yeah, yeah. I, I, all they do is invade countries. <laughs> <laughs> I love England. <laughs> I really do love yeah. them. They always got our back too, no matter how wrong we are. They're and the best. Uh, Jimmy, I believe it was Till Death Do Us Part was all in the family. <laughs> and, and Man About the House was uh, Three's Company. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Oh, you was, know what? Yes, so, okay, my mistake. Yes. I just want because people will start chiming in and hey, look, call Jimmy an asshole let and them... then a fucking sex well, addict. Well, how about a fucking. A fucking creep. So and... what? <laughs> so what? How about a fucking little high five oh, for Steptoe and Son? I know. That's no a one good else one. got that one. Oh, no, no. wait a minute. Rich has a problem. It'll It'll be be with bananas. bananas. What? You never get bananas on top of your oatmeal. It, they're they always brown. Look, they, oh, yeah, they look like little that assholes. Oh, because that's they right. did. Stevie <laughs> no, that was a mirror. the moisture. Right <laughs> Wait, now you're going to blame Stevie because his bananas are of looking Why? shitty on his oh, oatmeal? Nah. Here comes Steve. Uh, again, uh, stupid. He uh, just spooned a banana onto his knee. Know, really Here comes Anthony's favorite person, I Blind Stevie. I could be happier if that was a fucking truck hitting him. <laughs> <laughs> Stevie. Why are my bananas rotten? I don't know. I did you look? Yes, what is this TV work in the place? He doesn't know. I didn't handle that. They I look didn't... like your little brothers. Look at these that fucking things. Uh... He's all confused. Uh, why we didn't, uh... In England, too, after I did a show uh, when I was working there, I was selling CDs and com and peop comics go, you don't do that here. Do they look down on comics for selling merchandise? The one thing they used to say when I lived there was, American comics talk about business and English comics talk about comedy. Uh... That we're a little more show busy. Yeah, and then the other thing that I would get, which always killed me, was they go, "Oh, you're a bit slick, aren't you?" Meaning, well, meaning your act was boom, 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 and and the thing is, here we all try to be slick. to be as professional as possible, uh -huh. and come on and go bang, 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 bang. And there's a shambly ethic there where people come on and oh, sort of down the chemist, right? You know, fucking about, <laughs> fucking bullshit, isn't it? you know. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. are you going to say the joke at some point? <laughs> I, I always yeah. found they're a little shamblier than American comics. And I heard they'll set you up too over there, like uh, by giving like like the audiences don't like when your credits are read or something. I guess they think mm. it's kind of arrogant. So they'll go, "What do you want me to say?" And you're not. What, what's the key? Oh, it, really? You can't go like, like you've you seen them on. Well, they don't care either. 
a lot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unless they've heard of it, and they haven't heard of every... I mean, the other thing I found when I first went there, I remember, was you don't shake hands with the, M- the compere, the MC. You don't shake hands with them. Like, I remember coming yeah. on, and you know how... Oh, and, really? Or, let's have a hand for everybody yeah. you've seen tonight. You don't, you don't do that. No. They've already applauded because the the compares brought you on. Wow! And also the what MC gets pricks. paid more than the yeah. regular acts. So like if you do the store or whatever in London, they the, that guy gets paid the most because he has to go on in the beginning right. and then he has to go on after the interval because there's no waitresses. So we have an interval so they can go get beer and then he has to come on at the end again and do more time. And How like, is the well, comedy store? So I heard it's, it's great. great. We went in there. It's, fun. Fun. it's okay. great. I did that room. I mean, at Christmas time, it's for the fucking yahoos, but you know. I did that room, Jonglers in Camden, maybe. Yeah, Jonglers in Camden. So Camden. before I go on, and this room is just, you know, it's an outside. It's, yeah, it's, it's a man. They put on an open mic or a new American comic before mm. me. So this guy stinks. And now the thrill is gone. <laughs> oh, okay, we saw yeah. the American. Right. And I go on right after him. Oh, Another dumb it, yank. Oh, uh, was it brutal. It was He's probably really shit. Bad. Give him a chance. Go yeah. mad. Go crazy. <laughs> Rich Boos. <laughs> I was at boss, is it? So fucking does, what? Does your material translate over there? I mean, that's the big question. Everybody yeah. says that. I think it does. It you does, right? It does. Because yeah. even science has made that. Over. Oh, my God, I'm going over. What should I do? I'm like, yeah. tell jokes. Right. One after the next. And they translate. Also, hit them in the first three minutes. Don't fuck around, you know. Yeah. Come big up front, you know. Load it up front, load it, you know. Because they, they'll give you five minutes, and then they'll hate you. But if you don't make it happen <laughs> yeah. in the first yeah. five minutes. I've never done. gone. I always thought that they were, they, they, I always had this weird impression that they just weren't going to enjoy love it. You. I don't know. I've, heard, I've always felt the opposite. You're honest. They uh, love that. I've always felt the opposite. You've got to go over there, Jimmy. I would Check like it to out. try it, yeah. Proof, so you, uh, are, are you like uh, doing the world at this point? Are you traveling the world with your comedy? Or? Yeah, I'll be in the meatpacking district tonight. <laughs> I know, I know. Well. All by myself <laughs> alone on a stage looking around. No, and you got yeah. some Nova Scotia action happening soon, right? Yeah, I'm in mean? Nova Scotia. I think a lot of the comics uh, who are playing Carnegie Hall, you know, I maybe they look at my schedule and think, okay, so I'm at Carnegie Hall, but Proops is going to Nova Scotia. Yeah, see? <laughs> You're a little half, glass half full guy. You're a little mm-hmm. angry at Could the Could get a little lobster Hall. bisque and whatnot, a little uh, maritime frog. Cripps is a great comic. Yeah, very Thank fun. Thank you, Grace. And as I far as the comedy, fe- I know what you're getting at. As far as the comedy festival goes, you should be playing a bigger oh, fucking no, room. No. I'll, I'll say it for you. Comics. You're, you're not supp- supposed to say that type of thing, but I will. Cripps is, uh, what, you know, should be... Should be in a bigger room for the comedy festival. That's what but I'm, comics is a great club. It is. I'm not that, trashing those guys. I'm, I'm it's blessed. It's a great that, club. And I can't believe I said I'm blessed. <laughs> two shows tonight. Two <laughs> shows I'm a rapper tomorrow. From the comics. early nineties. <laughs> I'm blessed. No, I, but I'm glad to be playing comics. But yeah, no, no. Then I'm in Nova Scotia on Sunday night. There's a casino up there, and they're very nice. I think I've last. Oh, well, I'd never been there, and I went. And the lo- <laughs> first time I play, I walked on. And I went. I've never been here before because I'm cool. Oh and, shit. Uh, yeah, yeah. That didn't. You didn't get the sarcasm? Uh, yeah, after a few minutes. I was down at the town clock today. Two children died of boredom. I mean, wow. <laughs> Halifax is the end of the yeah. continent. You know? <laughs> a lot How of crustaceans. Up yeah. How far up? It's, it's way the pretty, fuck up there. It's pretty far It's up. way up, right? Yeah, yeah. It's almost as like, far as you go in that April. direction. It'll <laughs> be freezing tomorrow, I think, or Sunday, I think. Uh, it should it's nice, though. You know, they're nice. Canadians are nice. They're a good crowd. They're nice. I had. I, it's not, funny. You're not, you're I didn't remember. Really next to one. Montreal was not as great as I remembered it. Like it was good, mm. but it was not. And when I did the TV taping, I thought that uh, they were fucking dumb clucks. I re- I thought it was overrated. The people um, who go to the gala though are like people who would have subscriptions to a theater. You know what yeah. I mean? They're real square. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe I that was get it. Out sideways there. I was. I, by the way, I became in awe of John Panetta after that though, because I went on. I mm. I, I had a good set, but I saw how. They were not an easy crowd. They were tired. It was hot. They had been taping for a few. I was on next to last. And Panette came on, and that motherfucker murdered and got a standing ovation. A deserved standing mm-hmm. ovation. He is tremendous. If you, I, the yeah. first time I ever watched John Panette do stand-up, and he was fucking awe-inspiring. He was so good. Is he back to being fat, too? He's a big guy. He's not, as, he's not like, un- he like he used to be. Did he throw surgery? Uh, I don't That's know. That's what I heard. Did he get the surgery? Oh, yeah. He, yeah, he got skinny for a while. He got really fucking skinny. The last skinny. time I saw him was, what, two years ago in Toronto. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I'm Nice hearing. fellow. But those a... things are perfect for him, like Montreal. I've yeah. seen him murderize a gal. I saw him come out and host one and do a number up front with something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he hosted this one, too, and then closed it. Oh, fuck. He hosted it and closed Dude, it? Dude, he fucking... The galas are really mainstream there, yeah. I think. They're very mainstream. And, he did and... a bit... What was his bit about? What's... It, it's like... It's just the, the subject for a bit. Uh, he... Uh, what 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 food preservative does he do a, a fucking bit on? Yeah. Uh, 
it's it's like I would never have thought to do more than one line on this. This <laughs> cocksucker has a ten minute closing bit on it. Wow, it killed, man, yeah. dude! It yeah. was fucking annoying. It was so funny. I just kept hoping he would drop dead on the stage. It was fucking <laughs> <laughs> amazing. It was like uh, what's a, what's a preservative that they uh, oh I can't MSG BHT or MSG one or... one of those. Now we're That's why Montreal, you're playing to. It's really strange because it's a showbiz crowd, and then you're playing to a bunch of people who speak English in a town that speaks French. So it's as if you went to right. Calgary and looked for the French community, and <laughs> yeah. they'll all come out. And I mean, not that everybody doesn't speak buddy English there anyway, but I've always found that sometimes it can be a little. Depends on which joint you're playing, like Club Soda or whatever can be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what we did. That's what we did, a nasty show. That was sold out every show. That's yeah, the thing. It always like does. Shit. Oh, yeah. Always like that does. dirty shit. Yeah, that was um, it's it's funny. Showbiz crowds, I, I typically despise. Ugh. Like I told my manager, I want to do something in L.A. again soon. And I told him not one industry comp, mm. not one. If I don't want one <laughs> fucking pussy agent or one fucking jizz bag from a network, not one seat <laughs> for those scumbag. I really, yeah. they're the fucking worst crowds. Half the times they don't show up. Fuck them. They don't want to come. If they do, but make them pay. They might they're, discover you, They're though. repulsive. Yeah. They might you discover don't want you, them to come. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, dude, they're not... Really, I, I have such a hatred for them. might get discovered. Them. Yeah. If you don't <laughs> want them to come. Greg <laughs> Peck has a soda joke. <laughs> Proops is laughing at that. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Proops is on TV, yeah. man. Proops is doing very well on TV. Year, years ago, I was hosting a show that you're... It, when, when Bonnie was the, a newcomer on... I was hosting the newcomer set in uh -huh, Montreal. you fucked her. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it over with. <laughs> you did, Rich, by marrying her. Chicken. <laughs> what is this? The crowd was, it was all the industry crowd, and they were really being noisy, and I remember coming on and going, hey, everybody from Hollywood at the, and New York at the bar, you could shut the fuck up and give the comics a chance. And, and the crowd cheered, and everyone got mad at me, and they were like, you know, I was like, you know what? Fuck you. It's about. It's supposed to be the young comedians. Oh, this was in, Mon in Canada, in Montreal. Yeah, like oh, ninety. Yeah. Oh God, I'm old. It was ninety three or ninety four. It was in black and white. It was on the Dumont. Network. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were on right after the scope of the whole thing. Yeah, I hope. yeah. We were after the after Take Edwin's Texaco hour. <laughs> Edwin. Very funny. <laughs> you work with uh, Selena, don't you? Uh, Selena what did they Go do? Selena Gomez. What show? What show are you I on? I work with Kiki Palmer. I'm on. Uh, Which one are you on? I'm gonna tell you when I remember it. True Jackson VP is the one I'm on. Yeah. Okay. Where's um, that? I don't even know what that is. It's on. It's on, uh, it's on Nickelodeon. Don't yeah, watch okay. him. You'll be arrested. It's like me watching a Justin Bieber video. Or something. Oh, I like it. <laughs> it's not like you're gonna come to my house while I'm watching. <laughs> as oh, if I fucking watch one. That and that's not helping you pull in people. The Nickelodeon. I got the 11 year olds <laughs> rolling in, and that and Bob the Builder. I got the four year olds and the 11 year olds beating down the door. Did our parents come out though? I mean, they parents come out. Sometimes they do. My yeah. friend Ryan said to me, uh, "Hey, by the time they can come see you, you'll you'll be dead." <laughs> right. <laughs> you never wore on uh, Wizards of Waverly Wizards. Place. I was not on Wizards, Wizards wow, of Waverly Place. Up. I seen you on Nickelodeon. All right, I'm you the you connection. A, you have a nine-year-old. I got a I got a five month old. I don't. There's no reason why I should be watching well, that. Right. Yeah, exactly. Our show was funny. The guys who produced our show is the reason I did it because they they did uh, Mad About You and um uh uh. uh uh, bugger. No, I, I'm Malcolm in the Middle. Come, Come on. on, the reason you did it is because they called you. Don't oh, the reason <laughs> I did it is because I'm, I'm desperate and I needed work. <laughs> and the next reason was these guys were all right. No, we did a traditional sitcom. It was good fun. It's fun because you can't do knob gags, you know? Mm -hmm. You have to work clean on Nickelodeon, right. so it's like pe falling down and shit like that. Yeah. L wow. Like get gags from Lucy. And the stage we shot on was where Lucy shot, so oh, no I was kidding. pretty excited. Where is that? that? Paramount on page, tw uh, page 25. Stage 25. Okay. Ah, De the old Desi Lou Studios. It was Desi Lou. <laughs> Desi and her Lou. office was around the corner, Lucy's office. Yeah. What's Still in there now? Like cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Her and Marlo Thomas are in the men's room. <laughs> <laughs> What's in that place now? On uh, 25, I don't know. I think they put up some skate ramp or something. Yeah, they some... <laughs> skate ramp. And uh, there's another show next door. I went to Big Time Rush shoots on, I think, tw on 26 okay. or 27. 26 was Danny Thomas's stage, and we would shoot on there, too. And that fucking stage was evil. I don't know what the fuck evil Danny Thomas wrought in this world. <laughs> I know about the coffee table and all that, but, man, the air conditioning never worked. It was a... We literally... Had one of the new age uh, PAs go in and and like burn a joystick, you know, like yeah, just to, to get fucking, rid of the evilness. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Like that place you'd walk in and a sandbag would fall on your head, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck did Danny Thomas make some sort of deal with the fucking devil or something? You know, we used to shoot Tough Crowd on the uh, the Sony Studios on uh, 53rd or 54th, right. and that's where they shot a lot of The Exorcist was shot in that building. Get where the we, fuck 
Get out of here, really? Yeah, and uh, I believe Nirvana taped Unplugged there. I think I've said this on the air before, but I think a good part of The Exorcist was taped in that. There's so much years. history in all those places. Yeah, like, every single they just one never of them. go away. They yeah. never move. No, <laughs> places we, never fucking move. When we first shot Who's Line in New York, it was where they did Bilko, and I was excited Bilko. to be on no all measure. Because like, that was my favorite sitcom. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah, in the first place we shot Who, uh, Who's Line in England at Teddington Thames, I didn't know anybody's picture on the wall except Benny Hill in the fucking middle, man. And I was like, Benny Hill's right here. You know? <laughs> oh, you shot... Uh, uh, your show started very there? very first series of Who's Line we shot at Thames remember at the end of his show there'd be the little bridge and whatnot yeah. mm -hmm. that was where we shot the first one and I just Benny I remember not even yeah, recognizing you know when you first go to England all their TV stars and you're like who the fuck is weird right yeah. who's Bruce Forsyth you know and then do they know American TV the stars or no Benny Hill, huh? do they know American TV stars or no absolutely they, but they don't know some it's weird like they never got the honeymooners but they got Bilko so, wow. like, all the yeah, comics love Bilko, but then you say, well, what about the Honeymooners? They're like, never seen it. They just oh didn't show God. it. Wow. In Seinfeld, when I lived there, they were showing it, like, 2 in the morning on Sunday. So, like, wow. they never really got Seinfeld. So I mean, Jerry, you go there, and they know who he is. Sure. He's a star, but... Chris Rock said he sold out arena. He, he did the... He was doing, like, 17,000 seats for me over there. Chris. He well, he's a movie star, so... All right, right, right. Yeah, he could do it true. that way. Like, I'm Harlan, sure. they didn't know, and he didn't really go over. He didn't go over? No, but Stephen Wright, emo, huge, you know. Carlin didn't go over there? Not that I know of. How come, uh, did he I mean, go Hicks, obviously. Wait, How you said he didn't go over? Oh, you yeah. said he didn't go over. You mean he didn't make the trip or they didn't like him? No, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. I don't think he physically went over and ever oh, played there. Like, So okay. they didn't know him. Like, I remember doing a, a radio show about Carlin because a producer said to me, well, who's your favorite comic? And I want Carlin. And they're like, well... Who is he, you know? And so, like, I had to do a show, like, sort of explaining Jeez. who George Garlin was. And How, How about Pryor? Do they know him from maybe yeah, from movies? Yeah, they know him from the movies, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And That's his, weird, The movies right? are the weakest part of his career as far, you know, as exactly. far as what he contributed. No, the stand-up is where all the, you know, the genius is. Hicks they knew really well, and Dennis Leary, I think, when I first went there. Well, he didn't, did Dennis get popular in England? Like, didn't he kind of, or find himself in England and come back or whatever? Yeah, I guess. I, I, know, I know Hicks got really popular there. Yeah, he then, certainly did. Sort of came back. I'm a big Hicks fan. Did Me you, too. Did, I, did I you ever perform to him with yesterday. Him? They keep talking about some movie with Russell Crowe or something? Or is yeah, that just I keep a hearing rumor? they're starting to yeah, talk about It's a terrible <laughs> idea because, <laughs> yeah. first of all, Hicks would, I think, not like it. <laughs> Not that I knew him that well, but I knew him well enough to know that he wouldn't fucking like a Hollywood movie made about him. Relentless <laughs> is my Relentless is my favorite comedy CD. He's he's By savage, Bill Hicks. Man. And was he funny and really young, you know. I was older than him and he died way before me and um you guys came up? Too. Did you come up together, drugs? Greg? Huh? Did you guys come up together, kind of? Or? Oh, no, no. He was from Texas. Yeah. Uh, I met him in San Francisco, and I used to have a joke uh, where I'd go, the Union, it was about Ken Burns' PBS Civil War show. That'll yeah. give you an idea of how long ago this was. Yeah. Uh, the Union met the Confederacy here in a small town in Kentucky called Kill People Burg. <laughs> and so Hicks called me Kill People Burg for a couple of years, right? <laughs> We're doing a gig in Florida, and he comes up to me and goes, Greg, I know your name's Greg. And I go, Bill, I don't give a shit what you call me. You're my fucking hero. <laughs> yeah. He'd always go, hey, kill people, Berg, every time he saw me, because he liked the joke, and I was like, I was excited he spoke to me, Wow! because I, I thought he was so goddamn funny. We were working in Lubbock, Texas, me and him, and his girlfriend just dumped him, so in Lubbock, to get hookers, you know, you'd ask the cab drivers where to go, and they would take you, so I get, he goes, you want to hang out with me, and I'd just take a ride and sit in the car while he... Yeah, sure so, he did. No, I didn't... I, this was I, before Bonnie, you could oh, say. Oh, no, 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 I yeah. wasn't getting a hooker. Jeez, I, you I sucked his dick in a wig. <laughs> no. <laughs> probably yeah, probably so pulled the cab driver. He knocked the cab driver. <laughs> the cab driver. <laughs> the cab fare, yeah. the cab driver. Well, <laughs> this this ride's on the house. Oh, Hold on, we're going to hear this joke seven <laughs> oh, times. Uh, so, Let us oh, enjoy it, you asshole. So, he goes... Cab driver takes Hicks to the first place, and... Hooker opens the door and goes, you're a cop, and slams the door on his face. Yeah. Then we go to another place, and she opens the door, and she goes, you're too young, and slams the door. And he gets in the car. He does 10 minutes on stage the next night, how hookers won't fuck him in Lubbock. Oh, my and God. And it was, he just came up with 10, yeah. or, and it was just so, I'm watching him going, I'll never be this funny as long as I live. You should say that when you watch every comic. I know. <laughs> <laughs> watch an executioner. <laughs> you should say that when you watch a documentary on crib death. <laughs> I'm never going to be this funny. <laughs> <laughs> God, this SARS uh, thing's kicking my ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, fuck, I love that guy. Uh, he was all right. No, well, he it's... was hilarious. There was a, in England a few years ago, there was a comic who did a, like, what if Hicks had lived and extrapolated and wrote a whole act about Bush and shit. And I never went and saw it. I remember reading about it. 
And I, I, the only thing I can think of was there was nothing I know Bill would have fucking hated more. You'd have gone down there with a gun. Like, oh, you're right, going right. to put words in my mouth yeah, after you're I'm dead? speculate what I would have said yeah, yeah, about this. Yeah, you're so, you and know. With all due respect to Hicks, he's not the only guy that talked about social or political no, of issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and guys, like, there are guys that, that, this is what bothers me about, not Hicks, but people who love Hicks. Right, the canonization. Because guys try to do it. I think what he was doing, from what I've heard about him, I never met him. Was very sincere, and he was just that was the, the comedian yeah. he was, and he was very socially aware. And but when guys try to be Hicks, and they think that they're hip by clearing the room, it's like yeah. you're not clearing the room doing your act; you're attempting to clear the room. Where he's a guy really doing his act, right, and fucking offending yeah. people by the content in his act. There's it, a huge difference. It was also yeah. his delivery was really good and unique and stuff. He'd like. It looked like he could give a shit if he was up there or not. Oh, oh, yeah. You know, he'd just walk around and yeah. yeah. He. He went on stage at Catch when it was the hottest club in New York, and Brenner just got off, and they loved him. Brenner was, you know, on fire, and they loved him. And Hicks walks on, he goes, yeah, I, growing up as a kid, I used to watch Robert Klein and David Brenner, and I'm thinking, if these fucks can do comedy, so can I. <laughs> <laughs> that was right after <laughs> That's great. <laughs> that was, then he started doing that bit about Nancy Reagan, the anorexic kind yeah, of, yeah. that whole bit. The real, people... It's like someone yelled fire in the room. <laughs> they were running out in droves, and he just and he gets off stage and he goes. Or, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Rich Fox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's almost man. a callback <laughs> from before. Come on, Rich. It's, it's not bad. Rich it's a, is very it's a call, funny. It's a callback. Uh, we like those. We like callbacks. That's what they. That's what you do in comedy is callbacks. Okay, you're doing it for twelve fucking Unfortunately, years. Unfortunately, you never get one <laughs> with an audition. I can't. I can't get a callback to something I never auditioned for. Yeah. Okay, I want to get the call yeah, to have a chance to get a call back. back. <laughs> what <do> you <laughs> an audition? What the fuck is that? Do we have, oh, we, do we have to break. Was that front here or no? Yeah, we should break. Uh, right, we got, Ramirez is coming in. Let and, me uh, organize this. We got. Greg Proofs at uh, Comics Tonight and Tomorrow. Highly recommend you see Greg Proofs, a great comic that doesn't come around these parts uh, too often. And then, of course, Rich is uh, hilarious as well, and he's going to be at the uh, Gotham Comedy Club. So you got to figure out. One night you see Greg, and the other night you see Rich. Do, do both. Do, do a comedy weekend. Why not, right? That's Perfect. what I'm saying. And you guys are going to continue, Greg? you got time, right? You're hanging? Yeah. Efren oh. Ramirez is next, I guess, and then the situation at 9. Yeah. Oh, oh, you got the boy. situation. Yeah. yeah. Snooki oh, was on my boy. plane yesterday. Oh, really? oh wow! Yeah. You, yeah. you sat in she cargo. <laughs> <laughs> was she, was she was loaded in Oompa Loompa airlift? She's quite dinky. Another full house today. We got Rich Voss in studio. Uh, it's on. Rich was doing stand-up for us out of nowhere. I don't Rich know why. Just, he, Rich went to talk to us, and there was a mic next to him, and he just grabbed the mic and started talking into it. It wasn't on or anything, but. He felt more comfy standing up and feel more talking like that. That's how I yell at my kids. That, with I get a mic and I sit them in front <laughs> <Yeah>. of me. <laughs> Dumb daughter's leaving college. She's leaving college? Yeah, she's leaving. I, ta I told her, go to community college for two years. No, yeah. I want to go here. So I spent all this money for her to go d down south to a college. Uh -oh. right? And after the first semester, I don't like it down here. I want to go to community college. Save okay. one of the fuck So you only just, lost out on one semester? Yeah, which is about, I'm happy in the long run, but I don't get this whole college thing. I Dude, just we're no. college is horseshit at this point. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it, it puts everybody in debt, either the parents or the kids. It's you know, hundred hundred thousand dollars in debt on average. That's the goal. Uh -huh. So you you leave college and you already owe a hundred thousand dollars. It's all you got to do is, if I came in here and said, "Hey, my daughters want to intern," you guys would do it in a second. One, because you would smash them. But whatever. There's Efren. And then, oh, there he is. And uh, what are you doing, sir? What's up, Efron? And uh, or Efren. 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 What's up, man? What's going on, brother? I'd rather sit below. Star of Eastbound and Down. <laughs> I'm know. calling you the star of the show. Hello. All right. How are you? How you doing? That's Rich Voss. Going. Rich Voss. Rich Voss. Rich Voss. Greg Proops. No, that's all right. That's no. Greg Proops. Greg, how are you? Very yeah. funny uh, stand-up comic. My love. Are you kidding? Are you know him? Are you kidding? I've watched him on TV. The yes. Improv actor. Of course, comedian. You better be Efren, too. Oh. Yeah. Are, oh, you're not, yeah. yeah. Are you, you're not your brother, right? <laughs> I know you do that brother Well, do you thing remember last time you were on the show, he, he admitted yeah. that... You know, he's got, a, he's, he's got a twin brother, and then maybe the twin brother does some of the interviews. <laughs> Which is pretty goddamn funny. What's your twin brother doing right now? He, he's on Regis. He's sleeping, I think. <laughs> he's sleeping, you sure? 
Yeah, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> you know the good thing about being twins? You How about you need... talking to a mic? Yeah, get a mic that works. <laughs> the good thing about being twins, you don't need a mirror to jerk off in front of. <laughs> uh, sometimes you do, because then it becomes an orgy. <laughs> What are you doing, Rich? Yeah, why would you, who wants yeah, to do well, that with their brother? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah that's a good oh, one. Really? <laughs> kind of like going into the woods after a Little League game. Shut up, it's a joke, stupid. I know. Oh. Yeah. They're so defensive. Yeah, how about that who's we'll like, is it anyway, that. huh? Yes, yeah, eh? It's good, isn't it? Yeah. I saw it religiously. Thank you, buddy. Religious. God, I worship you, my friend. How kind of you. Yeah. And I got to see because you're an improviser, and it takes an artist to truly work with their imagination and go, really go, creatively. I thought you were really right. I think I I've said never you really considered crates. that before. <laughs> we, An improv. Have a little more respect, you guys. <laughs> 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 we well, you just felt like we I didn't need to bring that up. It is because, I guess of, we because of you and all the rest of the, all the rest of the guys that uh, uh, my way. friends and I. Yeah, my friends and I actually did a bunch of improvs on Venice Beach. Don't really. You know, and we started to study improv and do it all over Los Angeles. Uh, this is prior to Napoleon Dynamite. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but what was uh, that? but it, it actually <laughs> gave me the freedom to to create and explore that world as opposed to really getting. I mean, I grew up in East LA, so right. uh, doing theater and doing all that work just got me. Well, you know me my buddy Diedrich Dater then? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, of freaking uh, the martial arts guy in Napoleon Dynamite. Mm -hmm. Man, another yeah. another <laughs> great guy, another great guy. And actually, we were we shot. We were doing the sequel to, or, or the remake to Revenge of the Nerds, but it just never happened. Oh, really? Yeah, we, we, we shot for about a month down in uh, Georgia, and then they just They just it. scrap it? Wow, was it yeah. really awful, or was it just that they ran out of money? No, no, it was great, actually, but what happened was, I think Fox was uh, changing the, all the people who were involved in the, in the studio, so Fox Atomic was completely cut out, and oh, any really? project under those uh, independent... Uh, uh, Production companies were just completely cut out. Where does that Which shit was, go? Where does a month of shooting go? What do they just, I, you, you do know, they just put right? it in a yeah. spool somewhere and put it in that warehouse from Indiana Jones? <laughs> <laughs> One day, what, what, what unions will do when, when you're doing a non-union shoot, if they want you to get union guys, they'll let you shoot for a day. And then fuck with you the next day, because then you've wasted a whole day of oh, filming right. yeah. if you just ah, move locations. Sense. So it's one day of shooting is expensive. A month must be Jesus horrible. Jesus Christ, really? I show best knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> must cost a lot. What about Josie? Josie's very well indeed. She's been on EastEnders for the last couple of years in London. She's yes. phenomenal. She is phenomenal. Josie was the brunette on the English sure. version. And yeah. a very good buddy. We stay with her when we're in England. You guys know everybody. I know. They all yeah. know a lot of people I don't know. I don't know anybody. I know Voss. <laughs> hey, so, hey, hey, you're in New York. York. Get a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> so you're on Eastbound and Down. I love the show, but I got to be honest, I'm way behind. <gasps> I got it all DVR'd, my friend. Yes. I will catch up. Yes, so, but it's not the same, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you're promoting the uh, the season finale, right? Is yeah, that yeah. this Sunday? Yeah, it, yeah, it's this Sunday. Wow. How quick that is. How many oh. episodes do you guys do in a season? We did about... Uh, uh, well, the first season was about six episodes, and this year was seven. Yeah. It's so, a weird number, seven. Yeah, right? Isn't yeah. it? you think they'd order 12. Eight, eight or ten, yeah. Right. HBO yeah. is odd, though. I mean, yeah. they don't have the same... Where do you guys shoot? We shot... Actually, the second season, we shot that in Puerto Rico. Really? I know. Tough place, you know, hot and beautiful women. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> it was... And, and actually, HBO was asking for 13 episodes, actually, for the second season. But Danny uh, McBride's just blowing up. But the, he doesn't yeah, have the, exactly. He doesn't have the fucking time to do everything he, the, he wanted the, to do. I think the writers and even the directors, uh, I, it's not about you know the quantity, but the quality of what you put on every single episode. Mm -hmm. And it's very specific, and these guys know what they're doing. So when I came on board, I was just uh, fortunate to be a part of these guys. So what do you think they felt that they couldn't creatively do the show justice if they did six episodes on top of the seven? They probably figured they would water it down or shit. Yeah, yeah, because like you know, on TV you're telling a specific story and then and you go through the world of per se Kenny Powers. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, and I think that that the final episode of of, of uh, second season is it, it it was a surprise to me and how it ends uh, because I was such a big fan of the show in the first place. So um, to know the fact about what's going to happen, it just Wow, uh, those are the fans pleasantly surprised. surprised. Why yeah. did you shoot in Puerto Rico? Was it taking place in Puerto Rico, or was it just no? It, well, it no, it takes place in Mexico. In Mexico, so oh, okay. but we couldn't go down to Mexico because because um, the cartels and the fact that uh, <laughs> yeah. they're beheading people now. Yeah, it's probably better to stay away from Mexico. <laughs> yeah, because then maybe I wouldn't 
I wouldn't be able to come back myself. Your fucking trailer would get hijacked, <laughs> and you'd have to ransom your own equipment. Yeah, Mexico is a frightening place right now. <laughs> are you, where are you from? I'm from like what gang? No, <laughs> <laughs> no I just didn't know you were from Mexico. I didn't want to shit no. on Mexico. You said East LA, right? No, East LA, okay, man. Yeah. yeah. I was in a gang in school called the Devil's Advocates. We tried to see the other guy's point of view. <laughs> <laughs> Very unsuccessful gang. Hey, you're a faggot. I, I can kind of see where you're coming from. On that. Exactly. I am wearing a bow tie, and the back is cut out of my trousers. Yeah. I'm making a Waldorf salad here on the playground. <laughs> East LA is rough, isn't it? Rough. R yeah, r really um, rough. Uh, you still got family in East LA, or, or are you smart enough to I get out of there? I do have some cousins there. But yeah. you got mommy and daddy and your brother out of there. Yeah, I mean, I. Like after Napoleon Dynamite, I bought my parents a house. Oh, you're one of those guys. Nice. Yeah, oh. you know, and so the movie gave you buy your parents' house money. Yeah. Well, what Damn. happened was um, when the movie was made, uh, we all signed contracts for royalties. But when the studios bought it, we had to re renegotiate our contracts. So everything changed. Oh, shit. And because I was a union actor, I said, "Wait, wait, wait! They're bringing my team real quick." So, and it was a great renegotiation. And, and nobody money. knew it was going to blow up as it did. Yeah. So once true. they had blankets and chonies and bras and dolls and action figures, bobbleheads, they, they had everything. And then because of the animation next year, it's just going to get really crazy. Yeah, they're making an awesome. a, a animated uh, version. Yeah. And you're going to be um, voicing. And you got, you're getting a piece of all that? It's, it's pretty oh, sweet. Shit, man. <laughs> Good right for on. you, man. I like your <laughs> right stories like that. Of, we never got another dime. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I Gives never us all watch hope. that again. Yeah. Gives everybody hope that you, you, you want, hit a project that just makes a shitload and of money. And you can renegotiate. <laughs> I yeah. just got a That's I just right. got a twenty six dollar check from uh, Last Comic Standing. They're playing on uh, Fox Reality. Oh. Twenty six bucks. I'm not fucking around. You should send them yeah. back fifty. <laughs> Do you know I still get Safe. checks? I get like th a five dollar check. Like whenever Lucky Louie is released overseas or somewhere, I get like a six dollar right. check per episode. It's Bulgaria. kind of humiliating. Yeah. So I have to, I have to write. It. Right. Yeah. It's like I almost don't want to fucking. I don't want to put it in the bank because they probably think that's all I made. Like well, this guy was blow. <laughs> I got a check the other day for thirty two cents. And nice. How much is a stamp? Forty four or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like, really? Why don't you wait till it accrues a little? You're really gonna waste the stamp money to send me a check for thirty two cents? And I was sad. I would imagine you yeah. would be. I'm getting Voss a chair so he can move up because he feels bad sitting in the back there. I don't oh yeah, feel, yeah. You know what? I don't no, feel bad. No, yeah. no, I don't feel bad at all. I, because I'm a little out of it today. Oh, I had a rough a night last night. What, happened, what happened last happened? night, Rich? Oh, I, I tell you, to, I went to a party. Hey. <laughs> How is that bad? I went to a party. Well, I ate a lot of shrimps. It was so a I'm lemon party. What's a lemon party? Oh, oh you want to see oh. it? Oh. 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 Look at your faces, don't my God. I'm afraid. It's a very famous photo. Show them lemon I don't party. Have, I, I don't, I'm not online. You're it's not a very online. famous photo of uh, just three old men in Greg, can you pop uh, Can you just Google lemon party while you're over there, please? I want to see it. Come on. You've never seen lemon no, party? No, I love this shit. I was at a Tupperware party last night, and I sold a ton of stuff, so I feel very positive today. Could someone run in here and show lemon party? How do you, you get to? How do you get to? It's well, a keyboard and a fucking... Oh. Mouse no, and I get a it. monitor. You're I get it. Let her rip. And I have it's not, he's not, it's not violent. Is that Tupperware party recyclable? <laughs> Could you get yeah. a lemon party yeah. up there, please? <laughs> it yeah. is. Thank you. I'll do lemon party. If you burp it, it stays fresh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you asked what lemon party is, sir. I am running toward him. That way I don't have to look at it. Yeah, come on. Oh, you, you won't be... Uh, I'm afraid of this situation right now. Me too. We have a lot of uh, <laughs> questions about this photo, too. So yeah, I feeling little... trepidation. Lemon oh, party. Lemon party. Yeah. Oh, oh that's, see that. That's oh, it's not like the Boston Tea Party, yeah? It's kind of like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see? Same Emphasis participants. Oh, what, come they're on. now making money off the stupid photo? The Boston Tea no, Bag Party? There's right. Lemon Party. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. That's your Lemon Party oh. picture. See, now I don't want to see that. Oh. <laughs> it's, not, it's not, believe me, it's nothing. It's yeah. good. But look at his oh. shit. He's got, he's got a nice hog for his uh, age. I hope that's not a scratch and sniff. <laughs> hey, uh, no. Rich, you can relate to that. That guy looks like Carl Palmer, doesn't he? Oh. <laughs> Arnie. Well, wow. Arnie's in, a, in Lemon Party. Oh. <laughs> now, uh, the question we always pose is, who is who's the, the gayest? gayest? Who's, the, who's gayest the gayest guy in, the picture? in that picture? The two nah. guys kissing. I, which one, yeah, though? Well, the guy laying wild. back kissing <laughs> is door. having his nipple touched yeah. and getting his dick sucked. This one laying back is his eyes are closed. Uh -huh. This one's eyes are open. So the one who has his eyes closed kissing is more into it. Isn't that amazing? Because the guy sucking the dick, you don't even... He's, he's out of the picture. Yeah. yeah. Like, what about the guy who it's took the true. picture? How about that? <laughs> yeah, that a bit of a judgment call on who's gayest in this photo. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> splitting hairs, if you don't yeah, mind. Yeah, it really is. Uh, I don't know what comic. There's a comic that says, this is his line. He goes, you know you're gay when you're sucking some guy's dick and you're thinking of another guy. Right on. There's Lemon Park. Yeah, that's that's disgusting. Disgusting. Funny. Why don't you click off that phone? Oh, I can't please. Believe- now it, I can't look at my grandfather it, in his face again. <laughs> Wait, is that Grandpa from the Munsters? <laughs> yeah, he kind of does. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> what are these guys oh. on the bottom doing? Is that? Uh, it's just oh, one of those websites that. Yeah, a guy with his legs open, orange things, shorts, and, yeah. tight orange slacks. Yeah. Holy Jesus! But I know none of this. I, I'm a virgin. You asked. Internet. <laughs> no, I, now I know. Are you really not well, a perv on the internet? I, no. 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 <laughs> That guy on the bottom, no. his dick was so big. If you, had a oh. dick, if you had a dick that big, you can't be funny in life because you have too much confidence. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this guy's got a point, actually. I'm telling you, when it's if you got a dick like 12 inches long, you got too much. Con- you, you can't. There's no insecurities. There's, there's no desire. You, you're not overcompensating. Oh, I'm not down that. <laughs> I found that I have a giant wand and I can dominate the audience with it. And tonight at comics, all seven of those people are going to get dominated by it. He's not Thomas horsing wand. around, folks. Yeah, if you have a giant dick, it's probably difficult to be motivated because you do comedy. I first started doing stand up to, to meet girls. That's why I did it. Yeah. You know, I start, and when you have a big dick, you don't need to. So, what are they doing for a living? You need to meet girls? People. Huh? Huh? You need to do comedy. I need to do comedy <laughs> girls. Yeah, but if you have a 12-inch dick, you don't need to do jokes. You just fucking yeah, wear just tight slacks. Pull it out anywhere. Wear tight slacks. What do you think the big <laughs> dick guys job. are doing? Huh? I don't need the roll of coins. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> what, what do you think the big dick guys are doing for a living? <sighs> Accounting? No. no. What, kind of, what kind of profession do you think they're in? I don't know. Sales? A lot of sales are, guys? A lot yeah. of them are fucking confident enough to sell you bullshit. Mm. I don't probably, know. I don't, uh, probably uh, ad men, you know? Yeah, you think? Is that Tupperware? The same thing? Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, Tupperware. <laughs> I'm watching that show I don't now. think advertising people are big. Certainly they're not in show business. So you're tired today, Rich, because mm-hmm. you had too much, too many shrimps last I just, night? I'm just tired. I was up late. It's hard to sleep in a hotel. You know, you get it's uncomfortable. and Hotels are very comfy. I love hotels. Not the ones I stay in. Oh, really? What hotel is blinking red neon signs on the window. That's not a hotel. It has bars and a stainless steel toilet. I look out the window and see Lee Remick walking to the bar. What the fuck? Two dead twins at the end of my hall beckoning me all night. The elevator filled up with blood. Other than that, it was charming. Perfect. Couldn't buy Drink. At least you had a good book to read. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm in a nice uh, hotel. Yeah. Time. yeah. yeah. What hotel got you lucky at? on Priceline. Rich, ask a question about Eastbound and Down for our guest, please. Uh, yes. Because we got the big season I want to ask about yes. this, and this is true, and I'm serious. Yeah. Uh, everybody's raving about this, so how can I get uh, the first season for free on DVD? Who do, who do I talk to? You talk to me. Okay, there you have it. There's my question, because we want to... That's all we do is buy uh, seasons of stuff. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. just got, we're waiting for Damages Season 3 to come out. Damages? Uh, uh, the other one, He's Mad married. Men. Yeah, we want yeah. Mad Men uh, because there's nothing better than watching a professor cook crank. Uh, mm-hmm. And then I just finished Sons of Anarchy. So we want to yeah. do Eastbound Down. We're doing Mad Men. You know, that's all we do. Because the more of the stuff I watch on TV with with Bonnie, I don't have to talk to her. You know what I'm saying? Oh, if you keep the TV yeah. going, Why don't you, you know, guys just get the Because you've been married no, for we're getting so along good. long. Getting along Rich good and I are going to yeah. go see colored girls at the matinee today if you guys want to join us. Yeah, we're just going to cry that. and cry and eat melons. I want to see that. Getting bad uh, reviews, by the way. Well, yeah, oh, let them man. say what they want. Yeah, we saw two Magnolias together. Yeah. We called the whole afternoon. Yeah. I bet there's a scene in that pizza, movie no? where they dance around and drink wine and talk about how awful men are. I bet there's that scene. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <What is it? laughs> I hate when girls are in like the living room with this subtle lighting and their big wine glasses and they're talking and laughing and then someone puts on a, a song and they're like, oh, and they all start by Michael up Bolton and dancing. Yeah, yeah it just it with some crappy song and they just start dancing. And why is that again? Why does that happen? I don't know because it's a chick flick. Rich and I always play Lady in Red when we dance. But those films have those scenes and they justify and saying, it's okay, do that. And you go, no, 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 go talk to your husband. It's terrible. It's terrible. And I know whenever I see in a trailer a scene like that, I know I'll never see that movie. Like, there are movies I look at a trailer and go, I know I'll never see that fucking movie. Well, that movie, Valentine's Day, had all those stars, and I didn't have one inkling of... 
<laughs> What's the word? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to put it up on the door. Inkling. Hey, that's <laughs> Inkling. Valentine's Day. Uh, Carve that in somewhere. Jamie Fox was no, no, no. Everybody you didn't have one Rich. Rich is behind one, you. Rich one, is a dingling. Whatever. <laughs> is that where? Inkling. Hold on. Inkling. Hold on. He's, he, he's seen the list. Inkling. Is the, Inkling. Tell, I see the list. What is that? Those are that's things that's uh, yeah. everything wrong. he said wrong on the Words show. Words he's pronounced. <laughs> yeah. He's as yeah. dumb as they come. Oh, yes, and we heard Rupert Pumpkin this morning. Yes, we did. What shows are you? Is he watching again? Whatever. Uh, link. Don't don't get. I still Not want to right? He's the Norm Crosby of a generation. <laughs> <laughs> he really is. Good old yeah, Norm Crosby. Part of the allegations made against him, <laughs> and the alligators that have done it. We gotta add that one to the list. We have to break for the sitch. Yeah. Oh, right. Is he here? Yes, no, yes. I think he's coming soon. Yeah. Not yet. All right. I'm like leaning in like this. I feel like one of the guys. You are one of the just guys. Hanging you are one of the guys. Yeah, you're but right. this is really yeah. making me feel yeah, like you're leaning on the console. I did, uh, when you guys were over at NEW, he came in. I, I got to do radio oh. with him. This young man right oh, yeah. here. It's when we were at, uh, you don't even know his name? Yeah, Efren. Okay. Well, right. well, what, what, I, we what, call him Pedro, really. It was it's easier to Pedro. say Pedro. Or something. <laughs> say you don't want it to be called Pedro. Do always, do, it's Efren. Do people call you Pedro all day long? I was at the gym uh, a couple of days ago. What do you do and there? This, uh, check out chicks so. and out towels. <laughs> and out towels. Say, so people down the same as all so, of us. You know, hey, go on. Yeah, Girl Scout cookies. So here, let me get that shoe for you. That looks a little tight. <laughs> oh my lanta! All right, so so, uh, so you're at the, and uh, the gym. this guy came up to me and was like, "Hey Pedro, so how's working with Kenny Powers?" I'm like, uh, it's good serious, you know. Uh, but that's how we know you. Yeah, I but... I know you as Pedro. I don't, I don't feel like I should call you by your real name. I always get, no. hey, obscure guy. <laughs> <laughs> get out of the way. I want to use the water fountain. I get Jew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true, but, but, but it's surprising because people, when they see a movie, and when you th begin to think as if it's a documentary, that's a little strange, don't you think? Mm-hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. do you figure that that you're going, um, all right, the character that I play on East Bound and Down is totally different from Pedro. Right. And you go, I think he would put two and two together, but uh, obviously he's not smart enough to do that. Right. People are fuzzy on that stuff sometimes. Sometimes yeah. they are. Can, can you know, it's a fine line. You can sit in here and say, wow, look at all the money I'm getting from this show and when the cartoon comes out. But then the asshole that won't let you get out of that goddamn character in life, you know what I mean? It's... Well, it's, it's 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 one of those as I say, it's a double-edged sword. But to me, look, that's like a fine line. Uh, Pedro is the character that people have have. Yeah, it's a fine line. People uh, people embrace that character, and it's it's a uh, it's something that people can enjoy all the time every time they watch the film. So I'm um, I'm just fortunate to be a part of it. And and sure, if you want to give me a hug or a picture, sure, why not? I see in your eyes you want us to call you Efren. Uh, we will. Yeah, we will do that for now. On. Gosh, I see it. I see it. I see it. You can call me any goddamn thing. You like. No, what's the worst one? When I, I, I'd eat dog food on TV for a quarter in case anyone's out there listening. If they want to fucking take a picture with you, can you have your fat girlfriend or wife learn how to work the goddamn camera? I don't want to sit there holding your stupid husband like it's a fucking photo shoot. He's not take kidding. It. There's nothing worse was, than a woman uh, trying to use a camera phone. It's, it's fucking, you're sitting uh, here forever trying to sell your goddamn shit. Your uh, CDs. And the your flash isn't on. It didn't I'm take sorry. Yeah. Yeah. There's it not did. enough light here. Let's move outside. Uh, here's uh, my favorite is I think I shut it off. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then they got to hand it back to the yeah. boyfriend. He's got to turn the camera back on. It's got to take. Three minutes to reboot. Who told you about this? Uh, yeah, yeah. That implies that no one ever asked me for a picture. You don't have to explain my fucking sense of humor. They get it. Okay. You don't. You don't ever explain Rick Ross's sense of humor. Okay. Nobody's taking a picture with don't you. Don't you have a tickling of what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Or if it's a camera that's got a SIM card, they can shoot five thousand pictures, and it says memory's full. Mm. Ah, uh, yes. I've, that I've had that, too. Memory's <laughs> full. Anything else that happens? Okay, Don't you hate it when you're stalking a celebrity yeah, and you're I gotta talking about? You. Yeah, we, we're going to take a break. we got a break. Uh, let's get the plug for Efren, though, because the season premiere... Uh, are you leaving finale, us, Efren? I, I, no, I, I hope not. You guys are like... like no, i got to piss. He's got to piss, and you guys no, are like... No, we're just making sure the, the plugs cats. are there. Eastbound and down the, the season finale Sunday. That's At right. At what time again? Uh, I believe it's seven thirty. I don't know. Ah, they'll find it. Ah, yeah. you'll find it. You'll yeah. find it. And we got Greg Proops at the comics. You staying, Greg, or you gotta go? Uh, no, I'm gonna blow because I have to pass out. You're tired, huh? <laughs> I have, yeah, I had about an hour and a half sleep. He's, are you performing today, tonight? I am performing today and tonight. Uh, comics. Today you I'll go be see at the show. Uh, Central I Park, and uh, tonight I'll be at comics.
Central Park today. Set me up. Hook me up. Yeah, yeah. you know where they Dude, put I'll chess go. there? I do this little dance. It's, it's nothing, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's full of gaiety and mirth. Let me just say that much. Lemon party. <laughs> and uh, Rich I, I is going to be... I call it the Tangerines. 